Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to round number six of the Esports Drifting Association presented by Big Duck Club and here in Hampton Downs, New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keenan Cousin, brought, joined by In the Booth, as always, by Strix Pulse Strix, and as well as Skiska. Sis, <laughs> I'm screwing it up early today. Cisco Scarmuzza in the background, pressing the ones and twos. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another round here on a set of course set with the Esports Drift Association. And it is going to be a doozy here at Hampton Downs, a track based out of New Zealand. Who's ever actually been to New Zealand? It's not even a real place. I don't know why we're here. We're, so we're in space. Um, but yeah, in, in all seriousness, it is it is the, the island down under, slightly more down under. Um, as you take a, we take a look at the quick track map here, what you're looking at is actually that little loop on the northeast side of the uh, northeast side of the course, west. I'm, the top left, top. This the top left, um, and it's kind of a fast flowing track, then slows down towards the end. So you see that big first outer zone, then the inner clip, and then immediately you're going to see that second D cell zone right before the second uh, outer inner clip complex, and then another D cell zone before the next outer inner clip complex. So a lot of speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down here. A lot of careful use of your speed, and uh, especially in tandem in drift. I don't think we've seen this many decel zones in one section before the season. So um, going to be a lot of um, careful, uh, careful um, charges from the chase car. As uh, actually, we can take a quick look at a. Strix, we can take a look, quick look at the track guide. Yeah, as we take a look at the track guide, I think the first thing we'll probably notice is that the first outer zone is very, very long. Uh, so the drivers behind, if they do fall behind on the start, 
uh, they're going to have a lot of opportunity to catch up. And another thing you'll notice while looking through this track guide, no rumble strips whatsoever. If you drop a tire onto the rumble strips anywhere on the track, it is considered a tire drop. It's a, a bit different from what we've seen from other rounds where drivers are able to put a tire on the rumbles uh, in some sections, but there are absolutely no rumble strips. <laughs> As you can see, once again, no rumble strips. Um, there's also, uh, uh, another thing to notice here as well is that these corners, um, sort of decrease in radius, not necessarily the corners themselves decreasing in radius individually, but, uh, you have a really big wide first corner and then the next corner is a little bit more narrow and then the next corner is a little bit more narrow still, um, uh, so it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting watch for sure. And as you mentioned, uh, a lot more, uh, a lot more D cell zones. There are uh, going to be bigger changes in speed. So the chase drivers are going to have to really pay attention uh, when they're heading into each corner. So just taking a quick review here thank you again for, for rapti for the huge rate of 53 welcome everyone coming over from rapti stream again otm a uh, big part of the assetto uh, drift community so it's nice to see you guys supporting us but uh if you've never seen a competitive drift battle before each driver competes head to head and each battle consists of two runs the higher seated driver leads the first run the lower seated driver chases uh on the lead on the first run and then chases it obviously they put places three judges determine a winner or decide the battle must be rerun as a one more time need to run the ideal line as explained by the judges which you guys just saw the closer to the ideal line the better the, the score in the eyes of the judges you need to make sure the run is chaseable for the chasing drivers so no big angle no uh weird slowdowns and follow the follow the momentum map so you cannot be slowing down in places there's no big slowdown zones etc etc <clears throat> as the chase driver you need to make sure you initiate the run no later than the final marked point those marked points you'll be able to see on course the blue lines going into the first corner Maintain close proximity to the lead driver and match or better the lead driver's angle. You need to make sure you are matching that angle and not going shallow to be able to keep up. Match or better the lead driver's angle in transitions as well. So basically, as a chase driver, stay as close as you can while following the lead car. Lead car, put down the best qualifying run you can. And you will be seeing yourself move forward in the bracket. Speaking of the bracket, group number one here today. A lot of vowels here. Uh, we have Brandon Gardner, thank God. Uh, and then Grigori Andreev, Wojcik Warika, that's not going to get any better. Darius Ostryka, Vadislav Yakulovic, Artem Masushenko, Niko Stalia, the absolute prodigy back in ESD action in ninth place. And Peter Polin Polinkiewicz, actually that's not too bad. Um, like I said, tons of vowels, lots of vowels here today. Um, so for those who, uh, who are watching, who, who might be participating and I mess up your pronunciations a little bit, I apologize. Vowels are hard. Um, I, I, I don't know how to read either, which doesn't help, but first battle on deck will be Brandon Gardner, your number one qualifier going up against Grigori Andreev. Grigori, uh, no stranger to ESD action has had a ton uh, of really good success here. Uh, in ESDA, Brandon Gardner always qualifies well. Um, some get, shoots himself in the foot quite a bit, though. So, I believe he did well the last round. Shout out to Rangiro. Thank you for the follow. But, but uh, our judges today are Wes, Dai, and CJ, also known as Frosty. Wes being uh, coming over from VDS to help us out. Appreciate him. And Dai being your ESDA CEO. As we are ready to go here, Brandon Gardner is going to be leading in the blue S15. Chasing in the white S15 is Gogori Andreev. Here we go to turn number one. Brandon, good initiation so far. Gogori getting a little bit less angle, but going to use that to his advantage to be able to get onto the door Ooh. of Brandon Gardner very close in the first part of this course, considering how fast the first part of that course is going into the second D-cell zone. Now, great flick from Brandon. Showing while he was your number one qualifier. Grigori needs to pull a little bit more angle in the chase position here. As I say that, big angle into your final left-hand corner and across the line. Strix, I didn't think we'd be seeing people get that close that early on, but here we are. Yeah, we're seeing uh, pretty much what I was expecting to see 
right off the bat. I was ne I was not necessarily expecting to see it right off the bat, but I was definitely expecting to see it, and it has shown right off the bat. So uh, Brandon Gardner, Gardner, the number one qualifier, starting off in I, in the lead. Uh, Grigory Andreev, 32 qualifier, in the chase. But as you could tell throughout the run, Grigory and Brandon are still very close together despite you have your top and bottom seeds going up against each other. Uh, and it, it's, if this is what we got from the first and 32nd, we're going to see some crazy stuff later. Brandon now in the chase, Grigori in the lead. Grigori with a qualifying score of 85 versus Brandon's 94. So typical ESDA close qualifying. Cleasing a close right on the door of Grigori and matching the angle as well. Way more consistent in that gap. But great lead run so far from Andre. Brandon maybe going a little bit wide. They're going to have to change his line just a little bit. Coming out of the corner to stay in proximity. Ooh, it was maybe a little bit of curb there for Andre. Going to have to watch that back a little bit. Right into the door of, of Andre is the wheel of Brandon Gardner. Very, very aggressive chase run immediately from Brandon. Uh, great run from Gregoria, but I think Brandon was maybe just a little bit more consistent in this chase. Uh, I would be... Uh in agreement with you here, uh, if you take a look at run two, Grigory Andreev, take a look at that front end of the car as we head into, I believe it's turn two here. If you take a look at that front end, uh, he comes okay, down so he's fine there. I think uh, he does come down pretty early, but here as well, I can't remember where I saw it. I can't remember where I saw it exactly, but I was pretty sure when I was watching, watching Grigory, I was pretty sure that I did see a tire touch the curb somewhere. I, I just can't remember. Going into I three. I saw it too. Oh, okay. That okay. curb's good to go, though. That curb's fine. So all the rumble strips today, ladies and gentlemen, are, are off limits. But you're allowed to get one tire on. There's like some runoff uh, going into T3. That's okay. But it looked like it upset his car a little bit. Like, watch right here. See how it kind of hops? Just like it, like it kind of bounces a little yeah. bit. It looks like maybe he went a little bit too far. But it's kind of hard to tell from that camera angle. But it is okay to put tires on the runoff there. That's totally fine. That's actually part of the outer zone. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, judges are still deliberating on this one, I believe. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I don't blame them either. This is actually a very close battle. As you mentioned before, very close qualifying scores from both drivers. But... Um, you know, this one's a little bit too hard to call for myself. Slide on the left for Brandon. Slide on the right for Gagori. We're going to have one, two, and it's unanimous. OMT to start the day one more time as the first battle of the day. It did not take long. It was already close. And we're number one versus number 32 qualifier. Not a place you expect to see an OMT, but once again, the qualifying scores being very, very, very close. We only had one reserve today out of our top 32, and that is Grigori Andre for the score. He got an 80 and an 85. That is against Brandon's 93 and 94. So, I mean, that's only 10 points. It's not that big of a deal. Um, it's still very, very close between these two guys, and you're seeing it on track. Grigori always has a little bit of trouble qualifying, it seems, but always seems to show up in these top 32 battles, especially in his chase positions. So first one of the OMT, first OMT here, Brandon in the lead, Gregory giving chase, much better job from Gregory this time, matching the angle, getting right under the Ooh. door, Brandon trying to be able to force that lead driver, your number one qualifier, into some sort of mistake. Great transition there from Brandon, but Gregory is pouring on the pressure from the chase position right now, right on the door, making a little bit of contact actually, no harm, no foul across the line. Gregory, on that may be the best chase run. We've seen uh, Andre in a couple of tournaments here, in a couple of rounds. But I think that may be the best chase run he's done so far. Oh, boy. Gregory did not come here to play. Getting very close to the door. You can see, as I mentioned, uh, as we mentioned on the track map, that uh, this track was going to be very good for uh, catching up and getting very close but I was not expecting it to be as close as it was here into turn three. Gregory just nudging the driver, the passenger side door on that S15, just saying, hello, hi, I'm, I'm here, and I am very close to you. Go faster. 
also switching positions here on Dreve in the chase. We've seen Brandon do great stuff in the chase as well, but it, it seems like that, like on Dreve, he usually gets close, but really has to sacrifice his angle to do so. That was the first chase run I've seen from him in a long time where he was able to throw the same angle as that lead vehicle as we get into turn number one here. Great job so far. Oh, big straighten from Garner oi, in the chase oi, oi, position. Oi. Unexpected mistake from our number one qualifier. Could Andre be taking an upside here? Going into turn number two, first to second decel zone. On, on more contact. So Ooh. close. He's playing a risky game right now. Is Gardner going into the last corner? Big angle for Andre. Can he pull that off? Absolutely, he can pull that off. Did Brandon Gardner just get shut out here by Grigori Andreev? I think we just watched Grigori Andreev pull the stanky leg on Brandon Gardner. That was nuts. That was a fantastic <laughs> lead run. A fantastic lead run from Grigori Andreev. Brandon Gardner making a huge mistake and was not able to recover mentally from it, I don't think. I think he got shaken up by just shallowing way out and, like, tried pushing hard to try and catch back up, but making contact. And Grigory pouring on the angle, pouring on the steez. Might have center punched that inner clip post there, that bollard, but gotta say, I loved that transition, that huge huge angle he threw was sick yeah i I'm just looking at that initiation from andre i'm trying to see if there's any reason other than just an individual mistake that gardner may have straightened out there um made a little bit of contact into t2 as we see luckily there's only like really three corners here so i'm not gonna get lost uh again big flick from andre into that last corner Straightening out just a little bit on center, but nothing that big of a deal. But you really want to take a look at uh, turn one here. Just, oh yeah, you know what? Chat with the eagle eyes. Uh, Andreve straightening out just a little bit on that first zone, which caused Gardner to make his own mistake. Uh, I mean, there's still, Andreve had a power second and third corner. Very, very, very strong. The entry into the last corner was excellent i was gonna say the best one we've seen all day but this is the first battle we've seen all day um for those of you just tuning in you have not missed a darn thing um but looking in contrast for gardner's run he gets the angle and stays consistent but you can kind of see andre look like he's oh. going off course and kind of pedal it a little bit um it's 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 you just catch it in that camera um in that in that camera angle on run number two but um brandon kind of has to check up and react so it'll be interesting to see whether judges see that as an individual mistake on Brandon or whether that, whether that was caused by Andre. But keep in mind, Andre has an excellent chase in his back pocket and he killed it for the rest of the run. So will that one mistake be his downfall? We'll have to see here. Yeah, it'll be hard to tell. And I can I can see uh, I, I, I would probably see the judges going for placing the blame on that mistake. Uh, for Grigory and Brandon wouldn't really be faulted as much for it considering he was just copying the angle that uh, you know Grigory in the lead on run two was putting down trying to follow that line trying to follow that angle and whatnot um, but as you as you did mention Grigor Grigory with a fantastic lead run though aside from that first corner and it really gave the judges something to think about. They are still talking about this. I have a feeling there's a uh, there's a disagreement going on in the judges booth right now. Um, also, just maybe perhaps backing out and checking out um, the replays because judges do have that at their disposal. Um, but uh, again, I only really see. Well, we do have a call here, ladies and gentlemen. There is a winner being decided here. Slide him left for Brandon. Slide him right for Grigori. We're going to have, in, in their own time, one, two, and three. Brandon Gardner getting the win in a nail-biter over Grigori on Dreve. And I got to imagine it came down to that run, that second run, first corner. Uh, not stall out, but just... It looked like he was trying to keep it on course and just straightened out just a little bit. Unfortunately, Grigori absolutely killed it in every other aspect of his run. 
Um, and I think without that mistake, it would have been an easy on Dreve win. But unfortunately, uh, Brandon couldn't chase that. So that caused Brandon's mistake in the eyes of two of the three judges. And that will be Brandon moving on into the top 16 of group number one. And next up in group number one, top 32 action, we have, oh boy, Wojciech Walrika against Darius Ostreka. Wojciech. Uh, what, what, listen. It's, it's Wojciech. Yeah. The S14 will be going against the S15. <laughs> uh, representing Yellow Motorsports and Moto Lover. And shout out to all of the uh, Polish drivers in chat. I'm I'm so sorry. I I have Polish history, just apparently not enough. <laughs> Wes in chat saying uh, Worcester Shire sauce. sauce. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Why not? Worcester sauce. Why not? Sure. Why not? <laughs> um, but watch that. No, we'll be no in the lead position. No, no, we're just we're just we're just North American and stupid. Uh. Orika in the lead <laughs> position. Ostreka in the chase position going a little bit... Oh, oi, 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 oi. A little bit shallow in the chase and a little bit too far in the lead. One tire off in the grass. Good job making that less of an issue than it actually was. The yellow motorsports vehicle in the lead position. Not getting all of that line. Very, oi. very big flick. I feel like that's going to be a tune of the day today. Big, big, big entries into that third corner. Is Marika, again, that one little mistake. But luckily for him, if we if I saw it right, Strix, it looks like Darius was having his own issues as well in turn one. I think so, yeah. Uh, you see, uh, heading in here, it does, it does look like he's just not pulling enough angle. He's just got too much speed in that car uh, one way or another and falls off the track for, for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why. I didn't see the car bobble or anything. It just seemed like he wasn't pulling the angle he probably should have been. And then throwing the back end of that car, just whipping it around, getting all of that angle. I really hope we see that as a norm today because it always looks so wild every time. I just looked at uh, uh, the pronunciations of the next battle, and it's not getting any easier, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> into run number two here in the second battle of our first group, our first group here. Uh, Ostreka will now be in the lead in the S14 in chasing Marika in the... Oh, I got him backwards. S15 leading, S14 chasing. Much better job on that outer zone. A little bit shallow in the follow position of Marika. Got to be able to, and giving a little bit of room to that lead vehicle to be able to transition, and then right off the Woo! door puts the yellow paint on that Moto Lover S15, not leaving anything to chance. Is he going to dive back in again for turn three? Not quite, but the statement being made from Rorika saying, man, you may not know how to pronounce my name, but you're going to know my name after today. <laughs> Wojcik wow. getting a heck of a chase there. Um, I have my pick already pretty much sorted. Uh... Mostly because Wojciech in his uh, lead run, despite that tire drop, uh, had a lot of angle throughout, Watch uh, had a decent angle. And this if you take crazy. a look, oh my he's God. He's shoving him through the oh. corner. That's a, he's a boy. He has a family. Yeah, like we're oh going to have God. to take a look. We're going to have to see how the judges view that tire drop from Wojciech in, in his first run in the in the lead because that chase run was on fire. Another small issue from Marika as well. Uh, again, let's let's ignore what the, the cool stuff and kind of just take the whole run as a whole here. Run number uh, run number two, turn one, a little bit shallow from that chase vehicle. And I mean, if you're going to make a statement in turn one, you got to follow it up in turn three. Very, very, very close. Um, maybe grabbing a little bit of that last inner clip, which was moved out, I believe. Uh, it was moved out for, um, uh, just for fluidity's sake. Instead of being right on the inner curb, it moved out, like, maybe a couple of feet. But it looks like he might have tagged it in the chase position. Unusually, a chase car hitting inner clips is not that big of a deal. Uh, but it, when a battle is this close, it might be a factor. But, I mean, regardless of the outcome here, that was... I, again, the second battle of the day, I can't believe we're seeing people door people already. That just kind of comes with the course, though. Very smooth, very fluid, and even with all the slowdown zones, very fast. Yeah, and we do have a call, Keenan. 
Yeah, slide him right for Ostreka, and th there we go. Darius Ostreka will be moving on with the consistency, taking down Wojciech Warika. And again, I do, I, I, I'm going to hear it later. I do apologize for the pronunciation, but the Yellow Motorsports driver gone, not going down without a fight, but will unfortunately be knocked out in the first battle of 16th and 17th qualifier uh, in the top 32. Next battle, be Vladislav Yakulovich in the S15 versus Artem Matu Makushenko. Actually, it was a lot easier. <laughs> There's not as many vowels in this one. Um, in the chase position. So that will be uh, Yakulovich qualifying 8th versus Masushenko qualifying 25th. And just to briefly touch on uh, the previous battle as well, I can definitely see that that tire drop that Wojciech had in the first run in his lead yeah, I feel like that was probably the big deciding factor there. Um, because you really don't want to drop a tire here. Uh, judges probably saw that and were like, no, not going to happen. Uh, but here we are. Uh, cars pulling up to the line. We got Vladislav on your left in the S15. Beautiful. Artem Makashenko no in the S14 next to him. Sorry, yeah, that, that <laughs> he's got flick. Yeah, where's yeah, he's Drew got Adamson? The... Drew in the chat complaining there was no blinky lights, no LEDs. There you go, buddy. Here we go. Yakulovich in the lead position. Matushenko in the chase. Yakulovich in that Red Bull S15, getting all of that outer zone. Matushenko really having to shallow up to be able to keep proximity. Big angle from that lead S15 right now. Looking very, very good is Yakulovich. Matushenko getting all the proximity, though, but having to sacrifice angle to do so. And the last big angle from Yakulovich into the last corner. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't think this would be a theme of today, but apparently I should have been doing my homework. Big angle from the lead car there. Oh, my God. I It's Cisco... Uh, Cisco in the in the production truck there, like I'm pretty much sure you thought the same thing that I thought, and I thought that Red Bull S15 was going around, and yet, and yet, still able to pull it back. Uh, Artem Makashenko in the chase, not able to match the angle that Vladislav. Oh yeah, he does drop a tire there. He drops a tire, but the ridiculous amount of angle he threw, I don't even know if he was expecting that much angle to get thrown in. That is a great way to slow your car down and look cool while doing it, ladies and gentlemen. Throw that big angle, go into that corner as fast as you can. The, again, each corner here, each turn here has a closing radius, so they get tighter and tighter and tighter as we go. Ladies and gentlemen, run number two of this top 32 group number one battle. Yakulovich now chasing this man, wants oh. it done and over with. Very, very close, knocking up the tire of Matsushenko. He's just trying to run for his life right now in that red S14. But Yakulovich oh. channeling whatever god he believes in right now, going into turn number three, Woo! big angle again, <laughs> right onto the door, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think he, I think he was putting it, putting the rubber on the door through the whole run there. That was a chase run. I've, oh. I've watched a lot of ESDA, a lot of chase runs, and it's always competitive right out of the gate, but that was aggressive. Yakulovich is not here to mess around. Oh my Unbelievable. God. We have not even, we have not even gotten past the first quarter of the bracket, the first group of the bracket, and we are already seeing some of the slickest, most competitive lead and chase run combinations we have seen in a while this is nuts absolutely bonkers i don't even know what to like here's the thing art like uh vladislav yakulovich in the lead run on turn three dropped a tire and i can absolutely tell that in run two both drivers knew this Artem probably realized that he dropped a tire because he was the one chasing. Vladislav oh, saw, knew yeah, he yeah, dropped he a tire as run. well. Yeah. Uh, so I think both drivers were like, okay. So Vladislav dropped a tire. Now is my chance. And they both took it. 
Vladislav trying to make up for that mistake by having a very aggressive chase. Artem uh, trying to pull that advantage even further by throwing down a good run, and that result Man. in a run like run two that is nuts I, I i i man i don't know if we can enhance run one on that tire drop but you see the suspension compress but it's deadly close i think he wow. just i think he tried to time it because again there is like grass and then there is a little bit of an open runoff that's tarmac okay we do have a call ladies and gentlemen do we have any russians in chat Slide him left for Vladislav on right for Matsushenko. We have one, an OMT, and that is going to be Vladislav Yakulovich moving on. This the is only reason just absolutely driving out of his mind. No fear from Yakulovich, and that would be moving him into the top 16. I got to say, um, I'm kind of angry at CJ and Wes. I wanted to see them go again. Like, you know, usually on the broadcast here, OMTs, call, yeah. like, you know, there are some where it's just like, it's too hard to call, so throw them again. This is one of those where it's just like, no, throw them again. I want to yeah. watch more. I want more of that. <laughs> like, that was nuts. I mean, and lucky for us, we are going to get more of Yakulovich, but right now we're going into Nico Stalia going against Peter Polinkiewicz. Nico Stalia, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if you guys have heard the name before. A usual suspect here in ESGA competition, a Seto competition as well. He's like 13. or not even 13. He's like 8, isn't he? Like he's less than 10 it years old. It changes every time. We have a very poor change. memory I up have here just in the, a, booth. the worst memory. I know he's like an actual kid. Like an actual, yeah. like, he is a like very... should be playing Fortnite and doing multiplication child. He is a very, very young child and he is performing at a level that i would maybe expect a veteran sim racer who's been doing this for decades to be able to do here at esda the level of control and commitment discipline in the car that he actually has is beyond me i'm 27 years old i've been sim racing for quite a while and he just knows it feels like he just knew cars from the point where he was just out of the womb he was just sliding cars around it's just nuts but that's also not to say that any of the other drivers aren't also incredibly talented peter is also a pretty good driver here as well uh doing fairly well as far as i can remember uh in the previous rounds of vsda yeah, let's not take anything away from Polinkiewicz. Stalia, though, in the lead position. Nine years old. You know what? I'm going to write it down on my hand so I don't forget. I know he's less than 10. Um, I'm going to get a tattooed. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Polinkiewicz in the chase. Stalia, the nine-year-old prodigy, trying to run away in the lead position. Saw a lot of practice footage from him. He's looking comfortable here. And speaking of comfortable, uh, Peter in the chase position, a little bit wiggly in that S14, but Stalia lock to lock in the Escuco drift machine going into the second quarter. Now look, oh, maybe a little bit of contact from the chase getting aggressive is Peter. He knows he's got to have to bring it. He's been watching for the rest of the battle. Say, no oi, oi, oi. But Stalia, I think going offline there just a little bit. We'll have to check again in that replay, Strix, but I'm not sure if that wasn't a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B for that contact. Yeah, that was uh, a significant difference from the last run, uh, pair of runs we saw. But here in run one, uh, Nico Stalia getting all of that first outer zone, while Peter Blinkiewicz in uh, the back in the chase, just not getting the car set to angle. Same story here in turn two, not getting that car set to angle, just looking like the car is nervous. Nico throwing a lot of angle, but missing that inner clip and Peter making contact, possibly causing that shallow angle through the back end of turn three. But I think the story here is just Peter isn't pouring on enough sauce in the chase. Yeah, I think it just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, Nico had a great, great, great first half of this run, but I think maybe just a little bit of a hiccup there on the last corner as we go into the second run. Stalia now in the chase. Polinkiewicz in the lead position, maybe a 
little bit shallow from Stalia, but he's going to use that foot break to be able to pull that car back to the outer zone. Palinkiewicz, unfortunately for Stalia, getting all... Well, actually, Stalia kind of not getting a lot of angle at all. Going to have to resettle into the run, but a great lead run so far from Peter. Peter looking good in that Team Yellow machine, trying to make it into the top 16. Great Woo! job on the outer zone, getting using all of the tracks. Stalia ending the run with an exclamation point. But is it too little, too late for Stalia and a little bit of a donut over the line? Sometimes that means they're feeling themselves. Sometimes that means they know they made a mistake. Uh, I die, I die. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> we had one of our ju uh, judges and uh, um, the CEO so like, Never of mind. ESDA. <laughs> initial die just kind of show up and be like oh and left <laughs> um uh <laughs> cisco making a note as well uh peter blinkywitz with that rotary uh i can't uh, yeah i'm watching the production feed i don't exactly have i can't exactly get into the server so i can't actually hear any of the cars but <laughs> Uh, but I can imagine it's just an absolute beast. But we do have a call. We do slide him left for Stalia, slide him right for Palinkiewicz. One, two, and three. It is unanimous. The 180SX of Nico Stalia rep representing Escuco Drift will be moving on into the top 16. Nine years old, ladies. I'm going to keep saying it so I don't forget. And that is your top 32 complete. For your run number uh, for group number one, we have our four top 16 drivers for group number one. Brandon Gardner, Darius Ostrika will be your first pair. Peter, they're saying Peter, super shallow on entry uh, in outer one. Overall, very shaky driving. And that is the reason for yeah. um, the Nico Stalia win. And we are moving on into the first top 16 battle of group number one. The way ESDA works, ladies and gentlemen, if you've never watched an ESDA competition before, is there, there's four groups. There's going to be a winner from each group, and that will make up your final four. So this is group number one. And like we, like we, like we said, as soon as it refreshes here, we'll be able to show you your top 16. And that'll be Brandon Gardner, Darius Ostraka, Yakulovich, and Nico Stalia. That'll be your, your top, uh, your four members currently alive in group number one making it into top 16 competition as we wait on the line for our first battle of this top 16 group number one uh brandon gardner and darius ostrika both these guys having to fight their way in to top 16 competition brandon again your number one qualifier and usually he's a little bit rocky at the start of the event but really cleans it up towards the end Ostrika is out for blood all the time, so we'll be able to see if we get the best of best of Brandon, best of Darius here, as we are ready to send them. We have been seeing fantastic drives from a lot of drivers here, so this will be a barn burner for sure. Gardner in the lead, Ostrika in the chase, looking for a slobber knocker here for their first battle of our top 16 group number one. Little bit of a shaky entry from Ostrika, but cleans it up fairly quickly. Gardner very, very good in that first outer zone, getting all of these inner clips, going, oh, almost Ooh. dropping a tire. Is Gardner playing very, trying to play a lawnmower here in that S15, just using all the track, but Ostrika will not be denied in the chase. Very, oh, maybe grabbing a little bit too much of that inner clip in the chase position, but he was right there the whole time, not letting Gardner get out of his clutches. I am still <laughs> trying to process how these drivers whip into turn three so hard. Like, they are putting their back tires right on the edge of the circuit just before the grass. And then, like, the transition speed in and of itself. You see that weight transfer. Watch this. Just the weight transfer. The speed of it. The snap of it. Minimal is... handbrake as well. Yeah, and minimal hand... Like, that is just nuts. That's bonkers. And I cannot tell you how hard that is to pull off in these cars. These cars are very difficult to handle. Yeah, a lot of these are not your Tando buddies. These are not your uh, your public cars. You know, it, it's, they are very, every competition car is tricky to drive in its own right, but these ones is especially, uh, as we go into turn number one here, second run, big straighten from Brandon Gardner, not the entry he was looking for at all. He's gonna have to put on the pressure to Ostreka to try to even this battle out right now. Ooh, maybe almost a tire off for Brandon Gardner. Ostreka, oh, in contact. 
Contact from Gardner. He had to try something in the chase position after making the mistake in turn number one. I do think this is all over. And in contact again. I don't know about the second one. But the first one was definitely Brandon Gardner just throwing a little bit too much barbecue sauce on that sandwich. Props to uh, to uh, Darius Ostrika as well in the lead of run two uh, for taking that heavy contact and keeping the run going for both drivers. Uh, that, the, like we mentioned before this run, these cars are very hard to handle. And getting contact, that firm on the rear quarter panel is always very hard to gather up. And yet, Darius Ostrika is just kind of like, oh, okay, you just kind of punted my ran, whatever. Slide him left for Gardner, slide him right for Ostrika. We do have a winner. That is one, two, and three for Darius Ostrika. We'll be getting the win due to contact from the chase position from Brandon Gardner. It is unfortunate. Brandon Brandon just need, it seems to me that he needs to be like in the right mindset because he can he is a final caliber driver he's a very very good driver obviously qualified first i believe more than once but um just seems to be when he gets into a lot of these very high pressure battles uh he makes a little mistake and then that's just the nail in the coffin for him unfortunately next battle gonna be yakulovic versus stalia this one should be good stalia has all the talent in the world but yakulovic riding the high of that amazing top 32 win against Mastashenko moving his way on into this 16. Who is going to face Darius Ostreka in the top eight of group number one? Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to find out. This is going to be an absolute master class in driving. I, I, I just, it's, it's just like it's going to be a master class here at Hampton Downs, an absolute slobber knocker <laughs> of a of a, a couple of runs here. I could see this going OMT probably before I even see any runs. This could probably go OMT. Nikulovic in the RDS in inspired, heavily inspired S15. Stalia in the Escuco Drift. 180SX, so shout out to Skuko Drift putting out that car pack recently. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Big angle from Yakulovic getting all of that outer zone, but Stalia says, hello, sir. How are you doing? I am not afraid to go toe-to-toe, door-to-door. -to -door. Maybe one player off for Yakulovic by making a great save. Maybe not the best transition from Stalia. Need to see more angle from Stalia. Maybe we're going to see a charge from the nine-year-old right here. Woohoo! Yes, but not quite getting all of the door. He could have Yakulovic. Both with mistakes, there, Strix, and I'm wondering if it's if, if it's this, the the bridge is leaning either way, or if it's we we have an almost even battle here after that first run. Yeah, that's going to be hard to tell because I could see an argument for I, I could see the argument that uh, Yakulovich's uh, tire drop in the lead could have led Nico off. The, oh, okay, uh, Nico didn't quite get let off. But uh, it's possible that that mistake, uh, dropping that tire, may have caused a uh, bit of a late transition or a later transition than Nico might have been used to. Uh, and that might have shaken up Entirely his possible, part yeah. of the chase. Um, so I could definitely see the judges offering some leniency to, to Nico. But uh, Yakubovic doing a good job to gather the car up anyways and still put on a pretty good run in spite of that. Switching positions now. Stalia in the lead. Yakulovic in chase. I think these are where both these drivers are the most comfortable from what we've seen today. Stalia in the... Oh, Yakulovic right on the door once again, leaving no quarter, no mercy against Nico Stalia. Maybe a little bit of contact there even going into that first inner zone, going into the D-cell zone, going into turn two. Yakulovic right there still not letting that lead driver, Nico Stalia, have any sort of breathing room moving into the final corner. Excellent transition! Making contact! Into that last corner, did Yakulovic just pull out, pull out the Markov and shoot himself in the foot? Or did Nico Stalia make home his own individual mistake? Man, that's going to be hard to tell. I'm going to have to take a look at that replay to really take a look at the D-cell zones, try and see if maybe Nico Stalia had actually D-celled a little too much because he was ready to just pour on the angle 
that back end of the car was going and going and going until Vladislav punched it forward a little bit. Taking a look here, no, I don't That's know. That's, That's very tough. tough. But I think Nico was still in that D cell zone as he was pouring on the angle. Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be really hard. But that is a D cell zone. Nico was decelerating, mm -hmm. and Vladislav made contact with the front quarter panel of the car ahead. So this will be. Whoa. I'm stressed. I'm yeah. Big stressing. This will this will be a really hoy. Yeah. Every time I look at it, I get less and less conclusive. Ah, uh, this a I ah man, this stinks, but it is what it is. We do have a winner. Not the way we wanted to see this battle end up, but here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We do have a winner. Slide him left for Vladislav. Slide him right for Stalia. One, two, and three. Nico Stalia is going to be getting the win. Vlad, tire drop on entry and outer two and contact. Unfortunately, you know, probably some of the flashiest chase runs we may have seen all season from Yukulovich. I do hope this is not the last we see of the Russian driver here in ESDA with one round to go after today, which will be September 26th, round number seven, before we head into our ESDA World Finals. Make sure you do not miss it. 1 p.m. Eastern time, September 26th, here at Podium Esports, as we move into our last top 16 battle, or a top eight battle, rather, is going to be Darius Ostrika versus Nico Stalia. The winner will be moving on into your final four here. Will Nico be able to move his way on to potentially put himself in position for a podium? Will Ostrika but at the end to the run of Nico Stalia. Stalia, your number nine qualifier. Darius, your number 17 qualifier. Nico will be leading with Ostrika giving chase. Man, uh, both drivers are picking up uh, a lot of good championship points uh, here today at Hampton Downs, but Nico Stalia and Darius Ostrika are both very good drivers, so this really could go either way. Stalia leading now where they look the most comfortable all day. Ostreka has just looked strong in any position. Moving into T1 here, good angle from that lead vehicle of Nico Stalia, the Escuco Drift 180SX, but the Moto Lover S15 of Darius Ostreka is not phased in the chase position, maybe a little bit shallow, and I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. Moving into the second corner here, once again, prioritizing proximity is Ostreka. Moving into the final turn here, big angle from both, almost more in the chase position there, temporarily from Ostreka, but use, good job gathering it up with that foot break and good, great run, in fact, from both these drivers. And Stalia, looking the best he's looked all day. Yeah, Nico seems to be getting a lot more comfortable in that car. Darius Ostreka, not quite so much. The angle kind of shaky a little bit. Uh, turn one. Uh, you know, adjusting his angle quite a lot uh, in order to adjust his proximity to Nico uh, in that lead. And it gets especially not noticeable right here. You'll see Darius pour on the angle. He pours on more and then brings it back. Um, typically, you want to try and hold your angle as soon as you set the car for it. Uh, but making those minor adjustments, those minor little twitches, uh, the judges are going to notice that. And if it gets really, really close, that's going to put you at a disadvantage. For me, it looked like almost Ostreka was doing that just to avoid contact. Maybe he got in a little bit hot and then used the extra angle to slow the car down. Great heads up driving from Ostreka, but we still have one battle, at least or one run left to go here. Ostreka now leading Nico Stalia, giving chase in the 180SX. Great job on this outer zone. We've seen a lot of people go shallow here today, right? Edging in Stalia almost. Oh, oh my goodness. Contact being made from Nico Stalia. Look like he's struggling to keep that car behind Ostreka. Ostreka just on the loud pedal. Kill. Going Kill. into the last corner. Going a little bit shallow is Stalia and then a little bit wide. Is that the end of Nico Stalia's run? Because very, very solid from Ostreka. It's going to come down to who's at fault for that contact. Yeah, we're going to have to take another look at that as we head into your side-by-side -side replay here. Run two. Take a look at run two on the bottom right of your screen. Darius in front. Nico in the chase. 
Uh, heading out of Outer Zone 1, Nico comes out a little bit early, oh, yeah, and I think, up. yeah, he comes out a little bit early, and if you come off early on that first Outer Zone as a chase driver, that sets you up in a really weird spot uh, for that inner clip. So I think Nico is trying to adjust for that, try and make sure he didn't center punch that uh, inner clip post while still maintaining a decent proximity and he just wasn't able to slow the car up enough. You can see it again here. Yeah, he just has an awkward line going through there, catches up a little too much and isn't able to really slow down the car before making that contact. Slide him left for, I believe, Nico Stelia. Slide him right for Darius Ostreka. We do have a winner. Okay, now slide him left for Darius. Slide him right for Nico. Our favorite Grand Theft Auto 4 character. That is going to be the incorrect call. That is actually all left for Darius Ostreka getting the win over Stelia. Again, Stelia being found at fault for that contact. We did see... He looked like he was just trying to keep that car sideways and then came off the corner with a little bit too much grip, made contact with Darius, and unfortunately it was all over from, from there. But an excellent run for Nico here. Going to be bowing out in seventh place, but not making it, unfortunately, to the final four. Who is? Is Darius Ostrike, who is your winner of your number one, or your group number one round here presented by ESDA. But ladies and gentlemen, speaking of the Escuco Drift Driver, uh, Escuco Drift putting out a brand new car pack over the past couple days, being put out the Inertia Irish Pro Car Pack. Seen a lot of the Irish Drift Championship and British Drift Championship vehicles there. Uh, you can grab that on, I believe, Escuco's website. Go check them out. And being worked in with in partnership with us over at ESDA. I always like to see a bunch of new cars out in the Aceto world as well. BDC also putting out a new pack recently. A lot of new stuff, a lot of new content coming out to a game that came out in 2014, ladies and gentlemen. This drift, uh, com this drift community is alive and well. But ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna step away very quick to get your next 16, our next eight drivers in here. The Karius Lucas, Masashi Yoshida, uh, another Ostrika driver whose name is off the screen, who I'm going to see in a minute. John Elgood, Austin Zaleski, uh, Martina Simkus, Mustafa Adamine, and Steven Jarbo. All going to be in group number two going up next year at, at Hampton Downs. Do not go anywhere. We still have tons of drift action for you right after this. Coverage of the 2021 Esports Drift Association is brought to you by Big Duck Club. Whether you use their parts in your next drift car, time attack monster, drag machine, or street show car, Big Duck Club is prioritizing enthusiast needs with motorsports requirements. Visit BigDuckClub.com today. By Nexon Tire, one of the leading tire manufacturers in drift competition around the world. From race to street, Nexon has a tire for you. Nexon Tire, we got you. By NRG Innovations. From hubs, wheels, shift knobs, and more, NRG has the finishing touch you're looking for for your next build. NRG, keep innovating. By Next Level Racing, build your ultimate racing simulation experience with Next Level Racing. Esports tested and award-winning, Next Level Racing, be first. And by Vossen, your home for a set of Corsa drifting content. Want the track from today's event and more? Visit Vossen. .co.
We got you. Next entire. This is our series. So many different pieces that you have to watch out for. Where the stakes are always higher. $300,000. Where virtual meets reality. How bad do you want it? They're wasting no time getting at it. Where the best thrive and the flawless win. This is the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. for Porsche Panamera. We got you. Next in tire. This is a story about trends. This is a story about innovation. This is a story about caring. Or even a story about all of these things. We made up our minds and are now putting it into action. Let's start with a trend that's unmatched. Let's drive innovation that isn't just brilliant, but that propels changing life. Let's not just understand, but care truly and love. Who is this for? The answer is you. All of these efforts are made to make your life invaluable. This is just what we're here for. Everything about you is meaningful, from your time and experience to your future dreams. Creating your mobility. We got you. Next entire.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We've seen group number one wrap up here with Darius Ostreka being your first finalist in your final four, but we still have three more drivers to find out who is going to be on the podium steps today here at Hampton Downs in New Zealand. Next up is going to be group number two. This is probably the most international out of all the groups that we've seen so far. Vicarious Lucas, Masashi, Yoshida, uh, another Ostreka whose name I can't see because it's, 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 oh, there, Martinez. Sorry, Martinez. I know you're listening. I apologize. I, I'm dumb. <laughs> but uh, Austin Zaluski, John Elgood, Mar Martinez Simkus, Mus Musafa Amine, and Steven Jarbo. All of those drivers going to be up next, ladies and gentlemen. But your first battle, Vicarious Lucas going up against Masashi Yoshida. Yoshida, I'm not going to lie to you. Yoshida probably in my favorite car on the grid in the, the you're seeing him right now in this Amal wagon i think i think we have a Daiji, uh, um i think we have a daigo saito fan in this Amal vehicle with the monster energy on the door but uh strix also joining me up here in the booth strix pulse tricks and cisco scarmuzza uh doing the production feed as always on the podium side strix coming off of group one takeaways things that we can expect here in group two Oh, man, how do you even start, you know, like, uh, what I would be expecting here is more great angle, especially in turn three. I'm going to expect more great proximity, drivers getting right on the door. Uh, and that's specifically because this, this track just lends itself so well to a really easy sort of flow. Um, I would argue that this would be an easy track to do very well, and we've seen that proven in uh, the battle between the first seed and the 32nd seed, both going one more time. Uh, a very easy track, but it's also, because it's so easy, it's also very easy to get screwed up because, you know, your chase driver is going to be applying a lot of pressure, getting right on your door. You're going to hear that, you're going to see that as a lead driver so you know it's really interesting to see where these drivers are making mistakes and all this other stuff but we're just going to be seeing more beautiful beautiful transitions into tr uh, turn three or at least that's what i hope yeah going into this second group here we're just getting our final warm-up runs in i believe this is steven jarbo if I'm if I know he calls this the humble he calls this the humble but a very fast and furious inspired livery on this vehicle also known as AOM Looney again Looney uh, or Steven Jarbo a ESD veteran moving over from the Forza days nice to see him still in competition see him progress as a driver over the season and as a human being you know completely different uh, mindset from Looney completely matured as a driver we got the wagon here i wonder i wonder who who who's calling this out i think this is elgood i believe right this is giraffe again another esda veteran uh, a member we've seen more than once here in esda competition did very very good on the forza side of things but um i don't want to say he'd been struggling since he's moved over to a setup, but I think this is the first time I've seen him in competition. So nice to see Giraffe representing Killin' and Chillin' moving, <laughs> moving over as uh, I finally have access to be in the game. <laughs> oh, we got the little flag. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we are ready to go here as Vicarious Lucas is on the line awaiting his opponent, which I do believe is Masashi Yoshida out of Japan, one of the only Japanese drivers in competition today in the V8-powered BMW wagon. That is Yoshida in chase and Lucas in the lead representing Urta Esports. A couple cars in competition today as we are ready to go. Yoshida can bring it when he wants to, but Lucas has been on one, having just dominated over in Sujigiri, making his 
bid for VDC Pro License this season. Big angle from Lucas into turn one, but Yoshida will not be denied in chase. A little bit wavery in that chase position is Yoshida, but he is not afraid to put the pressure onto a Lucas. Transitioning now into the second corner. We've seen some, oh, Lucas with a little bit of a straight, maybe a little bit of contact in chase from Yoshida. Great job from both drivers moving into the final Ooh. corner. Big aggressive bite from Yoshida, but a Lucas making up for that minor mistake with a big flick into the final, into turn three. Man, what I say, we're going to be big flicks into turn three, and we continue to see big flicks. That is, oh, man, there is no other way to say it except the way that these drivers are throwing it into turn, tr turn three. Turn tree bot. Just, a turn tree bot. Uh, but the way the drivers are throwing it into turn three is just so gangster. It's, it's ridiculous. Super, super fun to watch. And on top of that, it's the most optimal way to get in there as fast as you can while still being able to hold all of that angle. You know, not always is big nearly reverse entries kind of rewarded in competition drift, but this is one of those times where that is an exception. Run number two here of your first top 32 battle, group number two. The only Japanese driver in competition, Yoshida, in the lead against the Lithuanian, a Lucas in chase. Little bit of respect being paid right now to Yoshida in comparison, but maybe just a Lucas saying he's I'm sitting on a little bit of an advantage here. I don't have to get too crazy. Or is Yoshida in the wagon just running away as I say that big, big charge in chase from a Lucas? A Lucas just waiting for the right time, the right moment to put an exclamation point on that chase run. Great job from both drivers there. Ooh, that was so sick from Vicaris on the back end of that run. Both drivers once again displaying a lot of skill today at Hampton Downs, like doing a fantastic job all around. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of very high quality content today on track. According to chat, Vicaris Lucas, 14 years old. So we have, let me get this straight. We have Nico Stalia, who is nine years old. We have Vicaris, who is 14 years old. So BDC I'm Pro Vicaris Lucas, by the way. Yeah, I'm. Oh, Nico is okay. I've heard. Nah, I, I was told he was nine. I mean, he may have had a birthday. I'm gonna go with nine. I'm just gonna stick with yeah. nine. Nine's a cool number. But I. No, nope, uh, still here. Couple I gotta say. Out, Sorry. Continue. It's just like. I. The future 20, of competitive drift is very yeah, bright. Very bright, very, very bright. young. Uh, like, I'm just sitting here trying to comprehend how I'm 27 years old here. And, like, I don't really take sim racing all that seriously. <laughs> because I'm just kind of, like, out there to have fun. But here are some of these kids here growing up with, like, proper sim rigs, you know? And they're just throwing down, like... Like, it's nobody's business. And I, I, I still can't process this. I mean... Like, these are some of the most gangster runs that we've there, been yeah. seeing today. And some of them were operated by incredibly young kids. I'm sorry. I just... I'll never understand. I'll, I am floored. So we do have a winner. Left for Lucas, right for Yoshida. And one, two, three... Three is going to be Vicaris Alucas getting the win. Vicaris Alucas is going to be getting the win again, earning his license uh, in, I believe, Sujigiri Pro, being able to get into VDC. So, ladies and gentlemen, get your Lithuanian flags flying for Vicaris Alucas when it comes time for EDC comp or VDC competition uh, for their next season. Uh, speaking of which, just put out a new car pack, uh, the, the new public car, so go check that out as well. But uh, next up, we have John Elgood in the Audi Q, uh, Audi RS4 Avant from KSC Motorsports going up against Martinez Ostreka in the Motor Lover E30. It's a very different battle. ESD is all S15s, is it? These two guys yeah. are here to prove you wrong as we have. This is wagon versus this is nah, this is not the uh, the E30 wagon. 
But ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a barn burner as well. I know Elgood's super, super hungry to be able to get move on into competition. He has haven't seen him in competition yet this season personally. Um, and then Ostrika is always hungry. The Ostrika family always, always very, very eager to be able to go out here and clap some cheeks. Big gap. Oh, yeah. Good job. Good job. Okay. Good. Great. Yeah. So, uh, ladies John, and gentlemen, tell who's an ESDA veteran who isn't by what just happened. John Elgood uh, took advantage of one of the rules we have here in ESDA and surely across all drifting. Um, if you are uh, one, of, uh, if one of these drivers do not get a good start, you can see here on screen you have a restart marker. Mm -hmm. As long as you show an intent to stop before that first blue line, uh, we can run that run over again. Everybody lines up. Uh, at the start line, and we give the run another shot, penalty free. Yeah. Um, so very good, smart move from John Algood there, and that's something I would expect from him. I believe um, I remember uh, running in the baguette spec uh, yeah. comp in Forza that no his team had also organized. I competed in that one, uh, and it was a lot of fun. So good to see that experience coming into play here with that restart marker. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going good to go once again. Elga looking for a bit better of a jump off the line. As Ostrika in the lead in that E30. A wacky battle as we go into number one. Good job on the outer zone from Ostrika. Some pedaling from that Audi in chase, but he is not fearing the loud pedal. Oh, almost making contact. Was El Good into the door of Ostrika? Ostrika putting down a nice solid lead run. El Good trying to find his rhythm right now in the chase position as we're seeing as kind of just keeping the car sideways moving into the final corner. Contact being made with Ostrika using that big rear quarter panel, hip checking the E30 of Ostrika. El Good. Man, it, I don't think it was good, but it was fun to watch. I gotta say, that hip check at the end gives me PTSD flashbacks to the time I was playing hockey. Gotta tell you, being about 110 pounds in like grade 8 or whatever and playing full contact hockey, uh, being the smallest kid on the team usually means you get absolutely bodied all the time. And that's just what John Elgood was doing whole this whole time. Just saying, get out of my way, little kid. And then Martinez just running away like, no, don't touch me. <laughs> This is a very, uh, you know, it's like a big brother, little brother, little brother dynamic of stop hitting yourself. <laughs> stop hitting yourself. <laughs> yeah, and you can see there was a lot, there was heavy contact into turn three. And that's probably what we're going to be seeing a lot today is a lot of contact as drivers try and throw a lot of, excuse me, a lot of angle into that corner as well. As we move into run number two here, again, contact being made from Elgood. So we might see a bit of a conservative run from Ostreka here. Not quite getting all the outer zone, but getting all of that proximity is that BMW E30 as we see the strengths. Oh, as oh. I see that one tire way off for Elgood in the killing and chilling Audi. Ostreka now knowing, i got to be saying, I'm sitting on it. Oh, I get oh. another tire off big wide. He's going to be able to bring it back in. Yes, he does, but... Got to imagine that's all over for Elgood, unfortunately. Um, you know, it's nice to see Giraffe back into competition. There's a big, big change moving over from Forza Motorsport to um, to Assetto. It's awesome to see him make the 32. Even then, there's uh, is a his neck got in the way. Uh, it's it's awesome <laughs> just to see him make it over, but um, unfortunately, just too inconsistent. A long neck. A VB long neck? No, Getting we're in, in way? we're in we're in New Zealand, not Australia. I already made that show. Close joke today. enough. Close enough. Do we even have but anyone from New Zealand in chat? What do you guys drink? Other than like <laughs> anything. You all oh, drink the Fosters? In the of nowhere. I've got to imagine that's a pastime. You all drink Fosters? Yeah, it's a pretty pretty obvious call here as we do have a winner. Kind of a... Uh, Maybe a little bit of personal bias, but don't like to see the homies get knocked out so early. But John Elgood going to be taken down by Martinez Ostreka in the E30. Excellent job from Ostreka. will be going up against Vicaris Lucas. I do believe that's a little bit of a teacher versus student dynamic. As I saw in chat, Ostreka was one, somebody who helped out Lucas uh, to get started. Maybe I'm just full of it. Maybe I shouldn't just trust everything that chat says. But, you know, that's what I read. <laughs> that's what I saw with my eyes as we move on to our next battle, which is... Austin Zalewski representing on the mountain, getting that big 
raid from Rapti earlier. If you're still here, thanks for thanks for hanging out. Um, one of Rapti's teammates. I don't remember his. I don't remember his tag off the top of my head, but going to be going against Mart another Martinez in the R Urta R33. Beautiful, beautiful car, and the favorite car of uh, of our producer here, Cisco Scarmoza. So may have to have a talk with uh, Simkus after get us a podium R33 as we are ready to go here. Both cars actually looking really good. Yeah, OTM always do always coming up with good stuff. That S15 in the lead position. Zaluski, again, another VDC pro having earned his way in. A little bit of a straighten from Simkus in the chase position. Zaluski looking confident up in the lead right now. A little bit of gap opening, but again, with all these D-cell zones, it's not hard to be able to close that gap. But consistently just leaving a car line from Simkus, I think just playing it safe, getting charged in there at the end when it is safe to do so. But I don't think that's the way you want to play Austin Zalewski. As we know, a very, very good chase driver, um, but a safe and smart run from Simkus, which maybe you'd like to see him a little bit closer. Yeah, that was a uh, very under. Uh, well, I don't want to say very underwhelming. It's very underwhelming. We've just seen a lot of good. We've seen a yeah, lot of great. Not uh, bad. But... Yeah, this is still like because it's it's hard to reason with feeling the way I feel about that run because it was still a very good run, mm -hmm. even by ESDA standards. It was still a very good run, but. In the context of the runs that we have seen, where we've seen door-to-door -door action, huge angle, really quick transitions, that was just kind of stale by comparison. Uh, you did see as well that shallow up uh, from Martinez in the background and that lazy transition into the second corner. But be even beyond that, still maintaining a decent proximity there, uh, throwing some angle into that turn three there. I... I mean, it's just like, you're just kind of sat there and just kind of wondering, like, if that's, like, you know, if that's, like, stale, then that really shows the level of competition that we're at here. Yeah, I mean, again, it just came, I think the only real mistake we saw in the chase was just that initiation. Let's see if Austin can capitalize, having the pressure off, earning his VDC license, yeah. nothing to worry about now for Austin. Oy. Oh, getting real close Whoa. in turn number one. Not the best outer zone, but making the best of it. Getting all of that outer zone going into turn number two. Right across the bumper of that R33. Austin almost playing. Oh, getting close there right at the end. Austin with a little bit more reason to play it safe, but poured the pressure on a lot sooner than Martinez, but still with a bit of a mistake in his chase in terms of not getting the outer zone he was looking for in one. Seems like where that's where a lot of people are struggling today, but made up for it in the last half of his run. Yeah, you can see uh, in run two on the bottom right of your screen, Austin Zalewski catching up towards the end of that outer zone, but that's only because he was going so shallow into that outer zone, trying to catch up to Martinez, who had built up a bit of a gap. Uh, doing a good job of doing that, but by sacrificing your line, you're also sacrificing points on the table for the judges to look at and criticize. Um, and after that first run being as safe as it was, you know, the lead for lead, chase for chase, this one's going to be interesting. This one's going to be pretty close, I think, based on the mistakes made. Yeah, once again, shout out to both these drivers, Urta Esports, having a lot of support in the chat right now, as we do have a call, while me and the judge are having a casual conversation in Discord, <laughs> very professional. Ladies and gentlemen, slide him left for Zaluski, slide him right for Simkis. One, two, and three, that is OMT. Zaluski hey. and Simkis are going to be going one more time, and I think this is not only good for both drivers um just be able to give i mean they, i think they both made really nervous mistakes so it's good to have the guys these both these guys out on track and kind of see what they could really do yeah both drivers pulling a very uh a very safe run for both runs making similar mistakes um and like i said like i called it i said probably going omt i think that's what i said right sure 
I'm, I, okay. I wasn't paying attention enough to correct you, so we'll go, we'll go with I'm it. I'm also too tired to remember. <laughs> I did not get any sleep last night. <laughs> Austin is going to be leading now. Simkis, Martina Simkis in chase in the Urta R33. Not Ooh! leaving any... Oh, oh, you know? Okay, that's going to be... I hate wow. to say it. Yeah, I was going to say our producer uh, jumped into the mic there really quickly. That looked like lag to me. And we are in an EU server, and Austin Zaleski is very much not European. So take a look at the replay once more. You're going to see Martina, so, uh, Martina Simkis kind of shallow up and suddenly surge forward uh, in a really yeah, weird was... way. Like, that car is behaving in a very unnatural way. That was the and, internet. Um, and that is definitely lag contact there. Uh you know, having done commentary for quite a few rounds now, I, I've been able to get a pretty good sense of it, and that was definitely lag there. <laughs> Cisco, time. you need a hot mic, I'm saying, man. Cisco says one thing every 10 minutes, and it's always hilarious. So this, <laughs> this, this quietly goes, it's pretty good, pretty good looking soup, if you ask me. Run number two. We'll get into the logistics of lag as we, uh, as we go here, but... Simkis now leading Zaleski, giving chase. Again, one of these drivers from Europe, the other one from North America. Very aggressive is Zaleski, but maybe a little bit offline. Going to have to shadow a little bit to make sure that car does not center punch the first inner zone. Going into the second decel zone now. Great job from Zaleski. Makes him maybe pull a little bit more angle, but I think he thinks he's sitting with a big advantage here. Simkis offline, huge in turn number three, opening the door for Zaleski. Ooh. And across the line. So, ladies and gentlemen, I I, I don't want to completely trivialize run number one or run number two, but it is going to come down to run number one. And what we normally see is lag is treated like technical faults. Like in so for the real life equivalent, if you're lagging, that's almost like uh, a technical issue or something on your side. And what we saw there was the exact opposite of what I expected, which would be to have the American driver lagging in the European server. We had the European driver lagging. So that might play into the judging decision. We, If we were going to do a rerun, it would have been done already. So yeah. this is going to be judged. Um, I'll see if we can get clarification for you as we do have a call coming in, I believe. Yeah, but... Um, this sucks. I don't like this. It, but... Yeah, it does suck. But it's also a lot like, you know, watching something like FD and then watching your favorite driver basically, like... A breakdown on the line yeah. uh essentially like control. losing a turbo losing or losing turbo pressure uh screwing up a spark so plug not. you know it anything can really happen in real life uh e or real life motorsports uh and here in esports we have our own collection of unknowns that can happen yeah. and internet connection uh being unreliable that's one of those so. things we do have a call in, ladies and gentlemen. Slide them left for Zaluski. Slide them right for Simkis. One, two, and three for Austin Zaluski. And the exact words from one of our judges, Wes Johnson. Johnson, sorry. Martinez, not very good lead. Laggy, but deemed genuine, even without lag there as well. Like he would have hit without the lag. So... I mean, again, it's not the way we expect to see lag in a European server, so it is what it is. It's super, super, super unfortunate for um, for that Urta, Urta esports driver, but um, it's unfortunately until we get someone with deep pockets who wants to run us all in real life, this is kind of what we're, we're playing with. So, uh, Next battle going to be your number 12 and number 21 qualifier, Mustafa Amine, going up against Steven Jarbo. Uh, Jarbo representing Art of Motion in honestly the best that car has ever looked and mustafa amini driving out of saudi arabia i believe also out of art of motion oh my goodness okay cool. unless they just end getting the art of motion on the back of the car just for cool but jarbo now in the in the chase position a little bit shallow on that initiation but amine getting all of that first outer zone looking really good in that s15 in the lead position, FD RX7 of Steven Jarbo, leaving a little bit of sp space here going into the big D cell zone of turn three. Good job from Jarbo being able to make the best of that surge on the transition. 
just a really good run all around, I do believe. Oy. So really quickly, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't had time to mention it yet because it's been happening in the background. Our producer, Siso Scarmuzza, has been crashing out of the server a few times. So I think we still have that whole run for you. But if there's any sort of extra gaps in between runs, that's just us going back in the game. Video games are cool. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Continue. It's a really unfortunate, you know. Apparently here, uh, technical uh, technical problems can happen both to the drivers yeah, and it's, it's to us. And it's all technology-based. Feels bad, man. But, um, yeah, trying to... Nope. <laughs> Got a little bit of the background in there, but uh, yeah, taking a look at that first run. Shout is, out to Monte uh, Carlos, everybody. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Uh, there we are. We're resituated here. I gotta right. say, though, I love that RX7. It's a Both nice one. Both these cars are beautiful. Jarbo's actually, Orbis. again, that car's kind of changed slowly over the course of the season. It's the best it's ever looked. Big gap right now for Aminated Jarbo, Woo! but great job to close that into the first outer zone. Not really a zone you can get away with that. Little bit of a straighten from Aminate, but doing his best to be able to keep that proximity close. Great transition from Aminate as well, oh. grabbing a little bit of that inner rumble strip. Again, that is a no-go zone here in ESDA. A big oh! Separation opening up actually there. I, I think just grabbing handbrake, I mean, I expected Jarbo to go a little bit slower, but Jarbo just throwing the car in, using that rotation to slow that RX7 down. Excellent driving from Jarbo right now as Jay's, J, JX team. Well, I apologize. You do say that, but there's an issue here. Uh, take a look on uh, run two. Uh, take a look at run two there with Steven Jarbo in that lead. You can see that kind of push and pull from Mustafa heading into the second corner. Uh, you can see Mustafa takes that uh, take that curb, but watch Jarbo here on the transition, and you can see some dirt get kicked up there. So that's a tire drop. Both drivers doing a tire drop in run two. Steven Jarbo had an advantage uh, through that last half of run two, and. You know, dropping that tire off the course, that kind of sets it back even at that point. So this will be an interesting one for the uh, judges to determine. All right, slide him left for um, Amine, slide him right for Jarbo. Who will be moving on into your 16 here in group number two? That is going to be one, two, three, Steven Jarbo. Call from the judges saying came down to the last turn and tire drop was not as severe from Jarbo as it was for Mustafa Amine. So that will be Jarbo moving on. Austin Zalewski, an all-American battle coming up. But first, we have to get to an all-Lithuanian battle, I believe, with Vicarious Alukas and Martinez Ostreka. Going to be your first battle here of group number two, top 16. With Vicarious, Vicarious, I'm sorry, in the lead and Martinez in the chase in that E30. Again, we saw both these guys just battle in the 16 in group number two here. A Lucas getting kind of a gimme against Ushida and Ostrika kind of getting a gimme against Elgood. So both these guys, you know, knocking the cobwebs out, getting out. Oh, my. Okay, Vicaris. Okay, buddy. Flying by Martinez here going to the line. But uh, yeah, you can see it in the back of the in the back of the graphics there. Just a pile of smoke just flying by Martinez. <laughs> Bakar is really feeling himself right now. Yeah, and again, according to uh, Quirk in chat, this is teacher versus student. This is a Lucas who has been a who has been you know hanging out and and getting and getting tips and taught how to drift from Ostreka. So let's see if the student can best the teacher here. Bakar in the lead in the yellow Urda S15 and Ostreka in chase in the middle of her S or E30. Sorry. Very, very close so far, but we've seen that all day. That turn one just very, very uh, indicative, a very, very close chase run. Ostreka, big mistake, big straight in the chase position, coming off a little bit early, making it look as clean as he could. Moving into the final corner, almost a tire off for Lucas, just kicking up some dust there on the side of the track, but Ostreka ending with a very, very, very close chase run. A lot to un unpack there. A lot to unpack for three corners. Vakaris. Al Lucas with one of the 
latest transitions I have seen heading into turn three. I thought for sure that car was going way off. Manages to snap the car where it was and just barely keeps it on the track, I think. Take a look at this. The yellow car ahead in the S15 there. The car is a Lucas waiting, waiting, waiting. Transition. Oh, my word. Very good. Oh, my God. How do you... Oh, man. Literally perfect to the inch. Like, that is a super late transition for that corner, and he made it look easy. Ostrika now leading Lucas in chase. A little bit of a shallow of an inch. I say a little bit of a shallow of an entry from Ostrika, but doing a great job of getting into that first outer zone when it mattered. But Lucas right onto the door of Ostrika. Not, no fear in charging against that BMW E30. Right across the Whoa. bumper of the transition is a Lucas. Again, just not afraid of getting aggressive in the chase against Martinez. What a chase run from a Lucas and a quick 360 to stunt on him. Saying, no, sir, this is my time. Martinez Ostreco saying, anything you can do, I can do too on turn three. Uh, once again, that late transition, barely keeping the car on track. Oh, it's just so steezy doing that transition so late. But uh, Vicarza Lucas having uh, perhaps a more consistent run um, throughout run two. But just wow. Uh, the, the angle we have seen from all the drivers today. All, like, everybody's been throwing so much angle at turn three today, and, like, they make it look easy? It's not. These cars, as we mentioned before, are pretty difficult to control at a slide. Um, even by, you know, sim standards. Like, these are some very hard cars to control. Like, and like Keenan said before, they're not your Tando buddies. Tandos no, are yeah. pretty no, no, easy no to drive. No offense to, to any other uh, uh, car makers out there. Just, you know, the difference between a street car that's made to just kind of drive and have fun versus a competition car is is huge. Uh, I know a lot of people who have been trying to get into um, into sim driven recently. Like, oh, I know what I'm doing with insert street pack here. And then they'll drive some comp cars and it's a completely different can of worms. Yeah. Very rarely am I speechless, by the way. I, I was very quiet during that second run, but a Lucas just doing stuff, man. That's the best way of explaining it. But we do have a decision. It's two and a one. Slide him left for a Lucas, right for Ostreka. And that is going to be... We got one for a Lucas. OMT. CJ says... OMT, they're going at it again. Wow. That is not enough to decide the winner. They are going at it one more time. I think that came down to some mistakes, perhaps, in Lucas's lead, because that chase was excellent, but nothing, nothing really oh, to boy. talk about in terms of mistakes in the lead position. Yeah, as we head BMW. back... As we head back to the instant replay, once again, having issues with uh, Assetto Corsa, something just not agreeing. But, yeah, like that, man, it is just, I cannot tell you enough how absolutely astonished I am by some of the steez that people are putting into these cars. Like, it's just, it's just gnarly how <laughs> getting into the turn three, they're whipping the cars around like they're toys. Like, it's just Hot Wheel cars on your little, like, rug playmat going, and that it's easy. They just point and click. And it's just there. I don't know how they do it. It's just nuts. ESDA is like top tier stuff right now. This is this is nuts. I don't want to say this is like the, like there's a lot of really 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 good drifting going on right now competitively. There's a lot of different series going on right now. Um, you know, shout out to BDC, shout out to um Sujigiri, shout out to uh, DCGP, who I believe are coming back. But I mean, to be able to watch these guys in, in ESDA every week or every round, week in and week out, just very, very, very fun to watch. Always putting down a show. Uh, and actually, we have our own uh, staff chat so we can communicate who wins and who loses. Um, and everyone just going, oh my goodness, like this is a very, very, been a very, very, very fun round to watch. And we've barely even 
scratch the surface. Like we still, we still have so much drifting left to go um, as we wait for these two drivers to get back onto the line for their OMT. And this track uh, here in New Zealand, Hampton Downs, not one I'm uh, particularly familiar with. Don't really follow the, uh, the Pacific scene, the Australian New Zealand scene as much as I should. But uh, the the track gets slower as it goes. So it starts off really fast and then kind of just slowly slows down. And because of these inner cliffs, because of these decel zones, if you get gapped a little bit, there's a, it's really easy to catch back up. There's a lot of opportunity to do it without sacrificing a ton of line, a ton of speed. Um, there, <laughs> there's... <laughs> God damn it, what? <laughs> Why are you putting Jay Leno in the staff chat? I oh like it. <laughs> He's like, he's wearing a jean shirt. Jeans are for your pants. I just like to comment on Jay Leno wearing a jean shirt. I wish shirt, you guys could see what I see right Jean pants. Now. He looks angry. Why the is he jean look shirt. The jean shirt is tucked into his jean pants, and he's holding, he's holding a the skateboard. He's he's holding a skateboard. Yeah. I and it's just, cannot explain this. Okay, to you. I'll say this. I'll say this though. At least he's not mall grabbing. I'll give him that. That's true. It took me a minute to figure out what mall grabbing was, but the I don't know if we're having some sort of issue. As we got both these guys coming back onto the line, warming their rears up just a little bit. Lucas almost... Okay. All right, buddy. <laughs> I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but here we go. Vicaris Lucas now in the lead position chasing is Martinez Ostreka. The winner will be going into the great eight here, group number one, to face the winner of our next battle. Vicaris Lucas in the lead position in the 2JZ S15 in the four cylinder E30 is oh, we have contact already from Ostreka. Ostreka saying, No more, I'll try to help you out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's pretty well run over there anyway, unfortunately. Yeah, not a whole lot of lag there to discuss. Just Ostreka, I think, getting it a little bit too hot. And uh, Lucas, the first hit he might have got away with, and I think Ostreka tried to help him out with the second one. And uh, and ladies and gentlemen, it is it is fall. It is The weather is cooling off. How about a nice warm bowl of soup for lunch? Yeah, I smell the soup. I it's, smell uh, the soup. Italian wedding. Italian, we Italian wedding. Mm, you know, you know... I hate to I hate to ruin Cisco, the, I swear. I hate to ruin the the soup the soup you have, comments here. Okay. You have no idea okay. how hard it was to bite my tongue there. I was close. I was close to cussing, my friend. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get into it we'll get get into it after then, I guess. We have run number 2 here. A Lucas against Ostreka again something to talk about in the first run we'll get back into it when we see the replays but Ostreka in the lead a Lucas going very shallow Boy. not getting any of the entry they're looking for but as that proximity let's see if we can make up for that mistake Boy. with the rest of the run very very close to that lead well, maybe one tire off for that chase vehicle of a Lucas oy, 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 oy. there's a lot going on and oy, Lucas oy, oy, with oy. a huge mistake Boy. unfortunately just I think threw it a bit too hard what in that is... second run what is going on? Yeah, not sure here. This could be a Ostreka win if we take a look at the replay. While you guys were talking what? about soup here in turn number one, if you take a look, it looks like a Lucas doesn't get all of that outer zone initially. But we already do have a call. Maybe I'm just an idiot. I just wanted to point that out before anyone else did. But... Uh... A Lucas just not getting it looks like he grabbed a little bit like flicked it in too hard and then grabbed a bit of the rumble strip and the car just didn't come out but uh, here we go here's your call not a huge surprise the judge is not deeming the contact being a Lucas's fault seeing it's Straka's fault they're gonna go at it one more time yeah that is a different kind of one more time uh, we've seen earlier in the broadcast, we've seen one more times that are just so baller on both ends that it's hard to call. This is one where it's just like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, what? it's no. just silly better mistake than versus silly mistake. But here we go. Yeah. We're going to get it settled here. Third OMT, there must be a winner. 
Vicarisa Lucas in the Urda S15 in the Moda Lover E30 in chase, Martinez Ostreka. This is a battle forever situation, but this is the last battle they can have before there has to be a winner. There we go. Whoa. Entry we were looking for from both. Alucas filling all that outer zone, but Ostreka Whoa. not afraid to get close in the chase. Transitioning now into the second corner. Ooh. Great job in chase from Ostreka. The chase of the day right now from Martinez Ostreka. Oh, again, Alucas oh. just using all the track oh. in that first and that last outer zone. Kicking up dirt, but no tires off for that lead vehicle. That is more like it. That is more like it. Much better job from both of them, absolutely. And Pisces and Chab going, sheesh! Yeah, yeah I would agree. Uh, take a look at this. That entry from Vicar Lucas doing a fantastic job there getting entered, but Martinez Ostreka getting very close. Just getting right up against the door. And then take a look at this here. I, I think I saw heading into turn two there, uh, heading into the transition. I think I saw Martinez uh, drop a tire on the rumble strip. Excuse me. Drop a tire on the rumble strip. You don't want to do that. Again, in turn two, that's where we saw Vicaris make his mistake. Caught that rumble strip. The car just over-rotated. But we have a switch of positions now. Estreka in the lead. Lucas giving chase now. Right onto the door. Again, not afraid is that S15 to get up close and personal with that Motor Lover S or E30. Woo! Sorry, so used to seeing S chassis here. Big transition into T2. Ostreka oh. doing a great job right now, trying to pull away from that chase driver of the Carousel Lucas. Ooh. But not so. Oh, a little bit of contact oh. going over the line. No harm, no foul. We'll see if that plays into the judging call. But, ladies, again, once again, this has there has to be a winner here. There has to be this, a decision. This is interesting as our producer once again crashes. Uh, <laughs> just having lots of technical issues today. But um, so there, I think I saw Martinez Ostreka coming out of turn one, drop a tire. And then in the next corner, I think I saw the cars drop a tire onto the rumble strip. And then in the next corner, I think I saw Martinez once again drop a tire. And then I think in uh, the exit of turn three, they make contact, but I'm still not sure how that happened. I kind of want to take another look at that, but what do you think, Ian? But uh, taking another look here at these replays. Shout out to uh, Brandon Patrick in the chat, getting his VDC license as well. Gonna excited to see Viorella, Fiorella La Virtuale competing in VDC in the next season. But uh, one of our judges, Wes Johnston, is going in our chat saying, literally Peter versus James Dean right now. And I, I gotta tell you, pretty, pretty, pretty yeah. close. We do have a winner, and it's a nail biter. As again, apologies to to more so the drivers and staff. Uh, we're just having some crashing issues only on the side of our producer because this game is is excellent and works flawlessly. Uh, a set of two win, but we do have a winner, and it is close. It is unanimous, but it's close. It's unfortunate, too, that this had to be, like, this had to go, like, triple OMT, because that means a decision has to be made. So you're pulling hairs at this point. So slide them left for Aluka, slide them right for Ostreka. That is going to be one, two, and three for Ostreka. Bacaris dropped Rumble, dropped on Rumble, and bobbled a little bit. That is all that came between them. Unfortunately for Vicarious and Lucas, he is he is not ready to take down Ostreka, and Ostreka will be moving on, trying to face Darius in the final four, but still has to face the winner of this battle. Austin Zaluski against Steven Jarbo. Austin representing from On the Mountain, Steven Jarbo from Art of Motion. Both these teams are like sentences. Austin Zaluski gonna be in the S15. And Steven Jarbo again, once again, in that beautiful Fast and Furious inspired, calls it the humble 
R uh, R thirty two. No, <laughs> FDRX seven. As we are set to go here, Jarbo in the chase position. And Zaluski in the lead. Jarbo not has not only is his car looking the best it has all season, his driving looking the best it has all season so far. We'll see if he can continue that here into this top 16 battle group number two. Great entry from both. A little bit of separation. But as we said earlier on today, there's a lot of places to Whoa. gain proximity here on this course. As you see it right there, going a little bit shallow on his line is Jarbo with no sacrifice there. But on Zaleski, a ton of speed in that S15 right now. Good charge from the chase vehicle. That FDR7 of Steven Jarbo. Excellent lead from Zaluski. Jarbo, minimal mistakes, just looks like he needed to enter a little bit closer. Those cars are very, very similar in pace. Yeah, I gotta say, the only thing I can really point out there is just I would have liked a little more proximity, but the line was good from both drivers, the angle good from both drivers, the style, the flow good from both drivers, really good transitions here. You can see Austin Zaluski pulling a little more angle to get a little bit closer to that inner clip. Steven Jarbo notices that and then immediately pours on more angle to respond. That is yeah. the action of somebody who knows what he is doing. Both these guys veterans in their own right. Jarbo, a veteran of ESDA competition. Zaliski, veteran of the platform of Assetto Corsa. As we go for run number two here, Jarbo in the lead position. What an entry from Jarbo there. Zaliski going to have to shallow out just a little bit to be able to close that proximity, and he does. Moving into our first inner clip in our first transition, just revving the nuts off that rotary RX-7 in the lead. A little bit shallow there was Zaleski on the line to be able to keep proximity to that lead vehicle. Jarbo Ooh. looking the best he has all season, but Zaleski having an answer for him in proximity. Is that enough for Jarbo to move on or Zaleski take him down? Oh, my word. I Hampton Downs has pulled off provided, given us, blessed us with some of the best driving we have seen all season, and I would argue, in ESDA history. It's been real fun so it's far. It's been I'll, run I won't argue, yeah. after run after run after run after run of pure bliss up here in the commentary booth. This is bonkers genuinely and if you have been following esda uh, over this year on assetto corsa you know like usually you kind of get these uh matchups here and there that kind of get a little bit messy we haven't been seeing that a whole lot we've been just seeing really ridiculously close ridiculously snappy good driving it's it just, i i don't know what else to say this is just bonkers everybody's driving out of their minds today I mean, it comes down to a couple of things, right? A lot of these guys are now used to, uh, are very comfortable in these cars now. Um, you know, these aren't just VDC physics. Like, they are, they are their own unique thing to ESDA. So they're getting more comfortable with their cars, getting more comfortable driving against each other. They're getting more comfortable with the formats and, and scheduling and the tracks. So we are around six now. The driving has just gotten better and better and better throughout the season. Um, it's just been fantastic so far for everybody. And again, both these guys are guys that, you know, no offense to Jarbo or Zaleski, that were good and always qualified uh, frequently, but always made some little mistakes here and there in battles. I know Zaleski had a, had a problem with, with being shallow earlier on in the season, and Jarbo just needed to, to find his groove and get in his groove. We know Looney can drive. It's not a secret. Just needed to be able to find that, that headspace to where he's focused, he's ready, and I think we're seeing the best of both drivers here today. It's going to be a shame to see one of them go out, but we do have a call, ladies and gentlemen, and it is a, it is a doozy. We can flip to the board, slide him left for Zalewski, slide him right for Jarbo. We have one judge going with what I believe is Wes, Steven Jarbo, Die. Harold McKinney going OMT and CJ going OMT as well. This is the round that never ends. They were going forever, ladies and gentlemen. OMT once again. Steven Jarbo, Austin Zaluski for the Battle of the United States. Some of the only American drivers in competition today trying to fly the flag into the Final Four. 
but still so many hurdles to get through. Jarbo now chasing OMT. Going up Fight against forever. <laughs> exactly. Fight forever. Fight forever. Jar Again, I think both of them made the same mistake of going a little bit soft into their initiations in, in turn one and then pouring the pressure on late. I honestly think that was the only consistent mistake across both runs. Are we going to see a super aggressive chase run here from Jarbo? We're about to find out. As, uh, as one of our judges, Wes Johnson, taking a PP, but he has returned. Here we go. Seleski in the lead. Jarbo giving chase much closer. Is the chase vehicle to the lead vehicle this time? Good angle from Jarbo, but Whoa. going a little bit wide. Going to see a little bit of a bobble from the chase car to keep it all on track. Great heads up driving from Jarbo, but good angle from Zaluski in the lead position. Moving into turn two now. Seen a lot of mistakes in this corner, but very clean from both. Are we going to see a charge from Jarbo? Yes, keeping it off the door of Zaleski, getting nice and close, having a proper line in that FDRX7. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a top 16 battle. May I repeat, this is a top 16 battle. Good God. I... Number five versus number 21 qualifier, and it's like they're in the finals I... right now. This is incredible driving. Oh my god. ESDA. Every driver who's been here today, give yourself a pat on the back. This has been genuinely the most astonishing round of drifting. Mm -hmm. A drifting so competition. Period. So good. That I have ever seen. This is like and it, it has been getting better noticeably round after round. Because after like, after basically every round I've ever done commentary, I've thought about it, and I've been like, that's the best round I've ever seen. And now it's just like, how do you top this? Going into run two now. Jarbo in the lead. Zaleski going to have to kind of do the same thing. Going a bit shallow there. Not getting all of that outer zone initially. Will that come back to bite him? But what tire off for Jarbo? Keep keeping the car on the course. We are still good to go, ladies and gentlemen. Good job from Jarbo. Not making that a zero. Very, very close to going all, all four off course. Keeping that car on track. Excellent job. Is that going to throw him off, though? Big flick from Jarbo. But Zalewski smelling blood in the water right onto the door of that FDRX7. I'm not sure if those two mistakes won't even each other out. Strix, because again, Zaleski just entered kind of mid-track and slowly worked his way up into that outer zone. At the end of that first outer zone, one tire off for Jarbo. Great job keeping that car on track and not making that a bigger deal. Yeah, but the thing is, you can take a look in the replay. You can definitely see Jarbo clipping some grass in the back end of that outer zone. And then heading into, uh, I believe, uh, I believe it was later on, uh, in that run, I think after the transition into turn two, dropping the tire once again, that's two tire drops for Jarbo. And we saw as well at the end of that, uh, at the end of that section in run two, as soon as he crossed the line, he reset to pits. And I yeah. feel like he knew, he like he screwed up. Uh, and it's so unfortunate because Jarbo has been on a tear. Everybody's been on a tear today. And it's just those little mistakes that'll get, come to bite you. We do have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. Slide him left for Zaluski. Slide him right for Jarbo. And that's going to be a one, two, three for Austin Zaleski. I think it came down to the tire drop. And miss, because of how late it was, he missed the inner clip as well. I think if he could have kept, got that inner clip somehow, um, Zaluski's not so great outer zone one may have forced this OMT again. But no slight from Jarbo. We've seen many people in chat, some of his teammates saying, this is the best he's seen him drive. You see people in our in our in our judging chat saying the best he's seen him drive. Uh, Zaluski, I think, can hold his head high. Oh, not Zaluski. Zaluski obviously can hold his head high, but Jarbo can hold his head high and and know that he's going in the right direction with his driving. Excellent job, Looney, and I uh, can't wait to see you back in two weeks in our next round, September twenty sixth at one p.m. Eastern time. Tra venue to be announced. But next up, ladies and gentlemen, we got a prediction in here in chat. You got some channel points. Who's making it to the top four? Is that going to be Martina Sostreka representing Europe in the BMW E30? Or is it going to be the American Austin Zalewski fresh off of punching his ticket into the VDC license? Is he going to carry that momentum into his final four appearance? Austin Zalewski 
Again, the best he's driven all year. Going up against a, another robotic, super aggressive driver of Martinez Ostreka. Who's going to be getting the win? Chat saying Zaleski as we go into the first run here. Austin in the, in the lead. Martinez giving chase. Martinez, again, cho choosing to go a little bit shallow on the line there and push out wide late. Good job being able to use that to the best of his ability. Proximity kind of going a little bit shallow, grabbing that inner clip was Ostreka, but Zaluski just, where did he find the angle in this S15? Looking Wait. so good. Maybe a little bit of a tire drop there for the chase vehicle on that inner rumble strip, which is a no-go zone. But using that line change, using that different line in the chase position to be able to put as much pressure on Zaluski, but Zaluski is just not phased. Check this hat. Uh, check this out. Heading into the sec uh, the first inner clip here. So heading into the outer zone, we saw in the chase. Uh, we saw in the chase Martinez. Uh, you know, shallowing up, but then in the, at that inner clip, as you just saw, Martinez closed the gap to basically nothing. And then, oh man, I can't process all of this. Cal okay, genuine request to the drivers, calm hmm. down, calm down. Yeah, don't listen, don't listen to that, don't want that. <laughs> This is uh, a lot of these guys fighting to try to make it in this top 16. We're going to talk about that as we move into our group number three here. But ladies and gentlemen, Martinez and Lucas in the lead position. Austin Zaleski in the chase. Zaleski repping the flag for the US of A. Martinez, great job on the outer zone. Zaleski making a similar mistake by going a little bit shallow and then pushing oh out wide. My. Seems to be the way of the world today in the chase position. A little bit shallow again from Zaluski grabbing oh. that inner clip. Similar mistakes right now when Chase from Zaluski, as we saw from Ostreka, is this going OMT again? Maybe a little bit of a slowdown there from that lead vehicle, but all the pressure in the chase position from Zaluski. Wow. But again, as tit for tat, Ostreka says, man, I you I know you can put the pressure on. I know I've put the pressure on. I'm not scared of you. The, both these guys coming in with their heads held high. Unbelievable, unbelievable wow. driving from OTM A to Z. Wow. Wow. Wow, I can't. I I genuinely can't tell at this point whether it's the same run twice. It's literally yeah, the same run I, twice. I, I I genuinely can't tell at this point if I'm unable to say anything because <laughs> because I'm like tired, or if because I. What do you say? Everybody like the quality of yeah, driving is... today has been unparalleled. This has been a good day of drifting, man. This has been a really really good. Day. I don't. I don't think, oh, oh my god, if there are people out there in chat who aren't sure what they're witnessing, you're witnessing, like, ugh, these cars are hard to drive. This track looks pretty simple. And every single driver sat here and said, track is easy? All right, I'll just send her, bud. Well, and the every single one of them has been sending it in spades. The, the whole, you know, we, we talk about a track being easy. Um, well, we'll get into that later because we do have a winner. And I feel like you guys want to know that more than listen to me flap my guns. One at a time, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a winner. It is not unanimous. It is a two to one decision. Left for Ostreka, right for Zalowski. Wes goes with. All right. Die goes with Martinez Ostreka. CJ going Austin Zaluski with a deciding vote. Wes Johnston. Martinez Ostreka with a two to one decision. Zaluski lets proximity on the last corner. Other than that, the mistakes were absolutely even. Both went into the first corner a little bit shallow in their chase. Both grabbed a little bit of rumble strip on turn two in their chase. It came down to the proximity in the last corner. Zaluski again. Just, I, th I think after he got that VDC license, he just knocked the cobwebs out of his head and has been driving absolutely out of his mind. Unfortunately, it was not enough to take down Ostreka, and Ostreka will be going up against Darius. It'll be an all Ostreka battle in the top four, but we still have two groups left to go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we still have our group three and group four winners to decide. 
but that will be the end of Austin Zaleski's OTM A to Z's run as we still have the entire right side of the bracket left to go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick breather here after all those OMTs. Reset the server, make sure we got everything fixed on our end uh, as much as we can. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today so far. There's still so much drifting action left to go. Again, quick shout out while we have the time. Go check out the new uh, Escuco Drift Pack. It is on their website, escucodrift.com. Go to the right-hand side, click Downloads. You can get that Inertia uh, Irish Drift Pack. A lot of cool cars. They're little replicas of the British and Irish drifting scene in there. We always like more content here uh, in a set of courses, so go check that out. But ladies and gentlemen, we will make it right back. Take a quick look at our next group, Warren Griner, um, our Tim Shulkov, Vitas Sipala, Brent Wolford, Victor Lashras, David Lipak, Dylan Fink, and Kirichenko, Sonislav Kirichenko, will be your next eight names in competition. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more drifting action with the ESDA. Round number six from Hampton Downs, presented by Big Duck Club. Stay tuned. Coverage of the 2021 Esports Drift Association is brought to you by Big Duck Club. Whether you use their parts in your next drift car, time attack, monster, drag machine, or street show car, Big Duck Club is prioritizing enthusiast needs with motorsports requirements. Visit BigDuckClub.com today. By Nexon Tire, one of the leading tire manufacturers in drift competition around the world. From race to street, Nexon has a tire for you. Nexon Tire, we got you. By NRG Innovations. From hubs, wheels, shift knobs, and more, NRG has the finishing touch you're looking for for your next build. NRG, keep innovating. By Next Level Racing. Build your ultimate racing simulation experience with Next Level Racing. Esports tested and award winning Next Level Racing, be first. And by Vossen, your home for a set of course of drifting content. Want the track from today's event and more? Visit Vossen. Co. Got you. Next entire.
This is our series. So many different pieces that you have to watch out for. Where the stakes are always higher. $300,000. Where virtual meets reality. How bad do you want it? They're wasting no time getting at it. Where the best thrive and the flawless win. This is the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Panamera. We got you. Next entire. This is a story about trends. This is a story about innovation. This is a story about caring. Or even a story about all of these things. We made up our minds and are now putting it into action. Let's start with a trend that's unmatched. Let's drive innovation that isn't just brilliant, but that propels change in life. Let's not just understand, but care truly and love. Who is this for? The answer is you. All of these efforts are made to make your life invaluable. This is just what we're here for. Everything about you is meaningful, from your time and experience to your future dreams. Creating your mobility. We got you. Next entire. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to what has been an absolutely exciting and very fun to watch round of drifting here. Round number six from Hampton Downs, New Zealand with the Esports Drift Association presented by Big Duck Club. Welcome back to Podium Esports, ladies and gentlemen. We still have your group three and four battles on deck right now. Group number three is warming up as we are set to go here uh, for your next group of drivers. Warren Griner, Artem Cherkov. Val Vitus Sapala. Uh, that's definitely wrong. Brent Walford, Victor Lashras, David Dawid Lipiak, Dylan Fink. Hold on. Wait, no. Okay, no. I thought that was somebody else. Uh, and Stanislav Kirichenko. I thought it was uh, Luke. I, I was like, I remember Fink. And I was like, is that Luke Fink? Hold on. Wait a minute. Um, but no, no. That is a completely different person. But uh, here we go. Practicing here for group number three in Strix. It, it, we have not been short of excitement today man like i am gassed before the like i was gassed before the first half of the show was over like every run has just like cranked the dial up beyond 11 all the way up to 25 like it's just everybody has been on their a game today and we're only halfway through I cannot wait for the final four to be decided here because, 
once we head into the final four battles, it's going to be a, a bloodbath. It's going to be, like, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, every single battle in the final four goes OMT all the way through. Like, three, like triple OMT. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Ladies and gentlemen, our first battle of this top or this group number three is going to be Warren Griner with Flick Nation driving out of Ireland, going up against Artem Chulkov in the FDRX7. This is your number two qualifier against your number 31 qualifier. We are set to go here with group number two or three. The numbers are hard. That's why I have a library card, ladies and gentlemen. And here we don't go it's okay guys just make me sound stupid on camera that's fine that's fine no all good no that's that's fine i i make myself sound dumb enough and you just make it yeah cool great unless there's some sort of technical issue which doesn't look like it and here we go Griner in the lead position. Chokov in the chase. Ooh, very aggressive initiation for Chokov. Woo! Making a little bit of contact here. Number two qualifier, Warren Griner. Warren Griner staying in it, though. Keeping the right foot. Chokov Ooh! not getting the message. This is not an MMA fight, bro. What are you doing out here? Two taps of contact before you even reach turn number two. Again, going Ooh! shallow a little bit in the second transition and making contact once again. Not afraid to put some purple paint onto the door of that 180 oh SX. A little bit wide going into the final corner as Chokov. Man, drifting, not a fist fight, bro. This is not F1. You're not supposed to hit each other. That was a funny yeah. topical joke. That's oh, very yeah. topical, topical, funny joke. Topical. I, man. I hated that. Man, I, I keep thinking, like, when are they going to chill out? And nobody has, everybody's just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> uh, like I, I feel... I, I feel a lot like uh, the first time I was ever doing commentary uh, for ESDA, which was also the first time I'd ever done any form of esports commentary or any form of commentary. I, I, I just don't know what to say. What do I even say anymore? Clean. Just Very clean. A lot of contact, which, again, with no mistakes, could be a detriment to the FD. But so far, so good. Warren Griner now chasing in the Flick Nation S13. Going a little bit shallow in the first outer zone. We've seen a lot of drivers do that today just to be able to maintain proximity. I think. Oh, Oy. big tire drop from the Ukrainian driver of Artem Chulkov. Not something you want to see. I'm going to expect that Warren's just going to back off a little bit here, and he does. He's still there, still close, but knows he's sitting on an advantage. He saw it happen in front of his own eyes. Very shallow. Uh, well, not very shallow, but kind of shallow coming across the line of the FD RX7 is Artem Chulkov. Unfortunately, I think. That might be the nail in Chilkal's coffin as we move into our replays. Yeah, that was a bit more decisive there, I think, uh, in that run, too. A lot of mistakes up in the lead there. And uh, Warren Griner in the chase doing uh, a very good job doing that heads-up driving, seeing that mistake being made and being all like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll lay back a little bit. You seem a little bit hot under the collar, so I'm just going to let you make your mistakes then. And, of course, that's a, that pays off as well, because with Artem Cholkov do, uh, going narrow on the exit, yeah, like, had he not backed off, would have would have wrecked him, would have ran him over. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think one of the, Warren Griner, again, getting all four, all three, all four, all three judges and getting the win, unfortunate job from Cholkov. Cholkov, uh, not a stranger to ESD competition. We've seen him drive very, very strong before, just not the runs he was looking for. All right, here comes some personal bias. Vitus Sapala from Urta Esports in the BMW. I believe that's a two, a one series BMW. I haven't seen one of those before. Very varied round of cars here today. Going up against Brett Wolford. Oh, Wolford. I can, he's Wolford. a I can't, I can't say his name right. Wolford? That XE, XE, driver team xenon driver brett uh an old practice buddy of mine um been been a been a been a friend of his for a long time glad to see him back um always finds a way to qualify but can never really convert in in battle so let's see if he's got his head screwed on tight today because if wanted wants to drive 
he is probably one of the best drivers Hang in on. this field. Hang on, does that must uh, does Brett's Mustang have like the, he, he have the kit, like the Knight Rider uh, kit car? Like, yeah, he kind of does. That's so sick. That's so sick. This round is so dope. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I don't think there's another. We, oh. would, we were that's all we were talking about in the in the break was just how much fun we're having. I mean, we always enjoy yeah. watching some drifting, but the tra the tracks really really um, bringing some good battles here today. Brett in the chase, Vidas in the lead from the Earth to Esports BMW. Not a bad job from Brett going again. Oh, Whoa. almost making contact with Vidas. Big dive from that Mustang. Something something crowd. Doing a good job on the intercut, but just barely not dropping tires is Brett Wolford. But Sapala in the lead, showing why he is a member of that very strong Erdus East Erda Esports crew. Not I would have liked to see Brett get a little bit closer, but other than that, very clean from both. Yeah, another very good run there uh, today at Hampton Downs. But uh, Brett Walford, of course, uh, quite a lot of push and pull in that proximity here. Uh, you can see Brett in the chase uh, starting off narrow, as we've been seeing all day. Uh, drivers just trying to narrow that gap as soon as possible. But Brett uh, heading into the inner clip, just charging in just a little bit too hard. And then once again, after the second inner clip, charging in a little bit too hard, has to back off, uh, causing that gap to form. And then uh, heading into the final uh, corner, it just... <sighs> It, it's like these little things. These little things are determining battle. It's just so close today. Yeah, this is your number 15 and number 18 qualifier. Very close in qualifying score. A little bit of a gap open right now from Brett, but I bet we'll see Sapala in the chase position close it. He's going to have to go shadow, and he does. Big Ooh. angle in the lead position from that Mustang. That's what these longer wheelbase vehicles are good at. Completely missing that zone and getting Wait. a little bit of inner clip there it, or inner curbing, sorry, is Vitas. That is a no go zone from this team, Ertis Esports driver. Nice and smooth in the lead position is Brett Walford, but two major mistakes from what I saw from Sp uh, Sapala in the chase. Sapala, yeah. is that an I or is it two L's? I don't know. Sapala. Might be Sap. Sapaya. Sorry guys, we're North American. We we can barely speak the English language that we all learned first of all. Yeah, me no do work so badly. <laughs> but um we brain no have a wrinkle. I feel as though you know, this one is uh pretty easily determined. Uh yeah. the only mistake like if we determine lead for lead, chase for chase in in Brett's chase um you saw a lot of push and pull, but there weren't any huge mistakes. Uh, with Vidas, uh, we saw him uh, drop a tire, which is a pretty significant mistake. Um, the judges are taking some time to confer with each other, though, because Vidas throughout uh, was more consistent uh, aside from that tire drop. Um, and yeah, missing that outer zone, just uh, tr uh, perhaps transitioning a little bit too uh, a little bit too early. Um, but I imagine the judges are probably trying to just, like, determine, uh, I suppose, where uh, some of those mistakes originated, whether they were independent mistakes or caused by something that the lead driver had done. Um, you know, uh, dotting your I's, crossing your T's, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but, yeah. Man. Like, and, and the fact that it's coming down to these, like, minor mistakes here uh, is just kind of showing, like, the level of caliber that we're at now at ESDA at round six. Um, heading into Assetto Corsa competition. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these drivers uh, coming from ESDA as it was operating on Forza Motorsport 7. And, you know, uh, some we of the... talk about that. <laughs> dark times. Uh, but some of these drivers did come in, uh, uh from that game heading into Seto Corsa, and there was quite an obvious, uh, adjustment period, and I think we've got to the point where everybody's on the same level, and our highest and lowest qualifiers for the top 32 are pretty well in the same ballpark. This is nuts. So we do have a winner, slide him right for Brett, slide him left for Vidas from the Earth Esports Machine, and that is going to be Wes... Die 
and CJ all going for the Xenon driver of Brett Walford, Walford in the Mustang. Uh, you know, there was mistakes on both sides, but I think Brett's mistakes were more, I want to see him be more aggressive, especially with the tone that's been set in the first two groups. And Vidas, you can't miss an outer zone and get it in, get hit the inner clip after. Unfortunately, I think one led to the other, but um, it just is what it is. Next battle. Victor Lashras in the Escuco Drift 180SX going up against another yellow, mo yellow motorsports driver in Dawid Lipiak. Dawid in the S14 that we've seen in competition today. We have just a minor changes. Again, those yellow motorsports drivers showing up into this 32. I think this is a third yellow motorsports driver we've seen in competition today. And uh, Lashras... feel, free, feel free to slap me for being wrong, but is Victor driving a Salady? He might be might be a 180 with a S13 clip. Yeah, I haven't seen the rear end of the car yet, but we'll see. All right, so that is just an S13. Yeah, it is an S13. So Lashris in the lead in the S13. Dawid Lipiak in chase in the 14. Lashras representing a Skuko Drift who just put out a brand new car back. Go check out their website at skukodrift.com. And here we go. Run number one. Good job. That is a 180SX, ladies and gentlemen, leading the, leading the charge here as Dawid Lipiak in chase. Again, going a little bit shallow on that first outer zone, but that shallowness is going to bring all his proximity you're seeing right now heading into run, turn number two. Maybe a little bit of curb from both drivers, but no harm, no foul, equal mistakes. Very, very, very aggressive transition in chase from Lipiak. Not afraid to get close to that lead driver on that transition. Excellent job from both. Victor looking very set in that 180SX in the lead position, but Lipia getting very aggressive in his chase. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to watch the replay because I was too busy popping off because I actually guessed that it was this lady and I was right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, looking into that first outer zone, that's probably one of the rare runs we've seen where the chase driver manages to get all of that outer zone gets deep right off the bat. Uh, heading into these corners here as well. Maybe a tire drop in the chase. A minor mistake, but a mistake nonetheless. And once again, both drivers throwing a lot of angle at the final corner. Um, uh, David in the uh, S14, uh, perhaps uh, shallowing up just a little bit too much, heading into that final, uh, heading out of that final corner. All right, Victor now chasing. Lipiak in the lead. Gonna have to put down a pretty aggressive, oh, as I say that, Woo! right to the door of that lead vehicle of Lipiak is Victor Lasheras trying to not leave any of this to chance, Whoa! putting some red, black, and white paint onto that yellow and black S14. Little bit shallow Aye. there. That's a big mistake from Lasheras. Gonna try to get put the pox or pour the pressure on with that proximity to make up for that mistake. And unfortunately, Lipiak pulling away just a little bit now. Is that too little too late from Victor Lasheras? You cannot make a mistake like that here at Hampton Downs. E, e. Just That's... came off a little early. Tried to get like I don't know if that was intentional. Just came off the zone a little bit early there, Strix. But you can't like this is not a track where you can get away with missing zones at all. It's just too yeah, basic. no. Yeah, uh, mistakes like that are going to be very obvious, and yeah, I think you know when everybody's control. yeah when everybody's driving. Uh, the absolute crap out of these cars you can't be making mistakes like that like the, this is where you got to bring your aim a game and just uh transitioning a little bit too early early missing that outer zone it's you hate to see it but that's how she goes we do have a winner here ladies and gentlemen slide them left for victor lacho slide them right for dawid lipiak dawid will be taking the win and moving I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> Moving on into yep. the next round of competition. Uh -huh. We'll be facing the winner. I, it's out of my system. I did it one and done. We'll be facing <laughs> the winner of this battle. Uh, again, just coming down to Victor transitioning too early and completely missing outer zone three. You can kind of get away with that in some other uh, tracks where, you know, we have always have like maybe missing a little zone here, missing a zone here. This track is too, everyone's been too consistent. You cannot get away with that here. Dylan Fink. On Team Xenon, if anyone from Xenon in chat wants to let me know who that is, um, in terms of old Forza username, unless they just picked him up, then good pickup for Team Xenon. And since Stanislav Kirishenko in one of the coolest cars we've seen today, again, a huge very uh, variation of vehicles here this round, 
Um, oh, it's Baggins. It do be Baggins, Ooh. though. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen Baggins in a long time. So congrats to Dylan Fink moving on and getting into the top 32 here. But he's got to take out Stanislav Kirishenko in the AMG GT in what looks yeah. to be a GT3 style kit on that car. Uh, by the way, Keenan, um, by the way, you straight. haven't seen uh, Dylan Fink in a while, but uh, in your absence, in the absences that you and Ian Plash have been swapping, I've been seeing Dylan Fink uh, drive in the ESDA season so far, and he's been doing a really good job. I just see Team Xenon. That's all I really need is Stanislav Karashenko from the chase straightening out just a little bit, not getting any of that outer zone in the first half of it. Dylan Fink looking nice and set in that 180SX. Big angle from lock to lock in the 180, but right there is Stanislav, as I say that, grabbing all of that inner curbing again. That is a no-go zone in turn number two, and we do not want all those cars on that curb as the Ukrainian driver aye, aye, aye. trying to press, put the pressure on to Dylan Fink right now, but I think it was just too little too late. The mistakes have already been made in the chase. Yeah, that was a strong finish uh, from Stanislav and the Merc, but uh, the rest of the run was pretty sloppy. We saw uh, entering very shallow, almost popping, ooh, almost popping out of that outer zone, but still being way too shallow nonetheless, getting very close to that, uh, the edge of that track on the inside, and then here just not getting to angle, almost missing the outer zone, and then dropping a tire on that rumble. You're not supposed to be dropping a tire on that inside rumble there. And yeah, it's just really unfortunate from Stanislav, but uh, let's see what happens in this run because, you know, we have seen some runs in this season where the first half is pretty messy, and then in the next half, uh, it pretty much swaps places. The chase is messy in the second half as well. We've also seen anything can happen here at Hampton Downs as we go into round number two. Dylan Fink doing a much better job Ooh. of filling that outer zone while getting close. Again, maybe just sitting on knowing he's sitting on a little bit of an advantage here, not getting super close, but we're going to see him push in the second half of the course, I'm sure. Right onto the door of Stanislav Kirishenko. Running away a little bit is that Mercedes from the little Nissan, but... Again, just consistent gap, nothing crazy, not putting pressure on the door, but very, very close. And with Stanislav, with the pretty, pretty much the almost identical mistakes that we saw from uh, from Victor in the last round, I have to imagine where this is going. Yeah, I feel like this would be a pretty easy decision from the judges. Stanislav just making a whole bunch of mistakes in the chase. Dylan Fink uh, being very clean in both runs. And Stanislav, of course, cleaning it up very well in the lead, uh, showing that, you know, they still have a place here. But, yeah, just that chase seemed to be a little bit wonky. And, uh, I, you know, I have to think this is probably going to be a pretty easy decision from the judges. But I do got to say, that Merc is looking clean as heck. That is a good-looking car. As, as yeah. somebody who's a big fan of dumb drift cars, that is... It's cool. It's not dumb yeah. in a bad way. It's just not like what you expect to see. Oh, I'm um, the, I'm, I'm the exact, I'm the exact same way. Um, I've been, I've, okay. I'll open and I'll openly admit I've been playing Juice Two recently. I kind of like the drift physics in that game, and I've been kind of throwing a whole bunch of dumb cars at drifting in it. And it, why not? I Why not? Just be, just be dumb. So one of the cars backfires just sounds like they're playing Minecraft. <laughs> just getting wood. Just banging noise. <laughs> Come on, backfire! Make me car go fast! That's so good. I have, don't have audio on, so while you were talking, I turned the stream audio on for a bit, and I just hear, boom, boom. I'm like, who's doing drywall for house right now? <laughs> like, but uh, we do have a judging call coming in right now i think uh i mean I've, someone may have spotted a gyre drop from fink in the lead position on that that second corner just seems to be really catching people out today and we do have a winner it is not unanimous as we go up to the judging screen here go up to the booth got wes johnston uh harold mckinney also known as initial die and cj um, CJ forgot last name um, 
also known as Frosty. I'm sure he'll come in here and yell at me. That would be CJ Walker. CJ Walker. Yeah, he's going to be walking to the judge booth or the commentary booth to punch me in the back of the head as we do have a winner here. So I'm left for Fink, right for Kirichenko. It is a two to one. As we've got Wes going with Fink, Die going with Kirichenko, and CJ, the deciding vote, going to be Dylan Fink. Dylan Fink is going to be knocking out Stanislav Kirichenko. Stanislav is going to be knocked out out dylan fink will be moving on into your top 16 here in group number three going to be facing da, uh going to be facing dawid lipiak so excellent job from all those drivers so far that is going to be it for your top 16 in group number three as we are moving on warren griner versus brett walford will be your next battle flick nations versus team xenon two xenon drivers in this group so far and I'll be Walford versus Griner. Walford's going to be in the Mustang, I believe, in the chase position, qualifying 18th, going up against Warren Griner, who is your number two qualifier. Can we just point out someone in chat saying, when's Adam LZ going? And Wes responds, he blew up in qualifying. Adam LZ doesn't have his pro license yet. Come on, Adam. You got time off. You got you got a whole team of people do all the work for you. Something, something. Rich man, something. Just a, just a joke. It's a. I'm kidding. Shout out to uh to to Drift HQ. Please. Uh, our business email is uh, uh definitely real esports drift email at gmail .com. As we're getting both these drivers on the line, apparently someone a little bit camera shy as Warren Griner. Warren Griner, another driver that always had like is incompetent, like in contention for making those top fours, but just needs the mental game. That's something I don't think it's, it gets talked about nearly enough um, when it comes to competitive driving or competitive drifting is, yeah, driving the car is one thing, but in comparison to uh, racing, you know, Podium Esports does a lot of iRacing, a lot of oval racing. Um, the mental game in drifting is so different because you have 10 seconds, 15 seconds, to where Let's you go. need to drive at a absolute 110 percent the whole way you make any little mistake that could be you going home you a lot of these guys put in hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of, of practice of preparation building the cars setting up the cars and all that pressure is is completely different from running even a 20 30 40 minute race where you can get away with missing an apex you can get away with making a little mistake can't do that here um so the mental game and you staying calm and knowing um how to drive your car in terms of when to put pressure on and how to be a chase driver and and how to battle against the other driver is just a huge area of drifting that's so so interesting and not talked about nearly enough as we move into our top six first top 60 battle of group number three brett walford in the chase in the mustang one of the last americans in competition today warren griner playing fast and loose oi, with oi. the track limits there almost a tire off for the irish driver oi, oh my oi, goodness oi. as i say that warren griner oi, he said, man are you do I heard you, Arrow. I heard you, Keenan. You say, I can't make the top four, buddy. I'm number two qualifier aye, for a aye, goddamn aye, aye. reason. Brett Walford not phased in the chase. Maybe not the best line from Brett, but definitely putting pressure on in terms of proximity. That 180SX was running. I He's been throwing, like... That's the most angle I've seen anybody throw throughout the entire run, rather than just waiting for turn, uh, for turn three. You can see that's that's a decent amount of angle heading uh, through mm. outer zone number one inner cliff, so and throwing a lot of here. angle on the exit, throwing a lot of angle on the entrance into turn two. Brett Walford dropping a tire on that rumble, and then once again throwing a lot of angle is Warren Griner. Brett Walford doing his best to match it, but man, Warren is just on, he's on a, he's on a level. He is on another level. I'm not sure where that level is. I don't think I'd ever be able to see it for, considering how high up he is, but woo. Man isn't even on a level. He's got a game shark. He's got him cheat codes. <laughs> Went to gamewinners.com. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Brett Walford now in the lead position. No slouch to put in on some solid runs. <laughs> Warren, what are we doing, man? 
he went a little bit too wide there, kept the car on track. Definitely a mistake from Griner, hey. but was just painted that yellow line and kept all four tires on track. That easily could have been an off track for Griner. Oh, as I say that, Brett Walford dipping one in the dirt, keeping that car on track as well. This is going to be a really interesting call. Griner getting there at the end and putting some pressure on after the at the end of the run. But that first corner, Strix, that first corner is going to be a huge talking point because, again, you can see it really good from these replay cameras. He's almost off track and really has to pedal it to keep it on track. Yeah, take a look at run two. Bottom right of your screen. Unreal. Oh, my Lord. I don't Lord. think that was intentional. <laughs> no, was I don't insane. think that was intentional <laughs> either. But that's the thing about pulling off uh, steezy stuff like that. It, it, some, like, even in skateboarding, yeah, it's, stuff just kind of happens sometimes, and you make it look steezy anyways. You just roll away. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, I made that happen. I wanted that to happen. Uh, but... You know, Warren Griner has just been, like, throwing down these crazy driving runs so these past better. two. Just cleaning everything up, mm -hmm. driving a lot more wilder, like, a lot, like, I feel like there's a lot more ferocity behind that wheel. Just kind of, like, throwing the car into the corners, uh, you know, just manhandling that 180. Um, and, of course, I'm going to point this out because I kind of have to. The proper rear tail lights, because I don't like the Type X rear end facelift stuff gross i mean you're allowed to have an opinion even if it's wrong but uh the bug eye stuff don't look good it looks like aftermarket tail lights and they come stock from, from that sorry looking for mistakes from brett <laughs> here again born i think that was game game blouses for brett walford i think he was taking the win there but this one tire you're going to see right here it tire drops are pretty heavily affected in judging calls in esda um not so much like what you would see in Formula Drift, where it kind of depends on how bad the tire drop is. But yeah, man, as we say that, we do have a call. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner and going to be moving on. Slide him left for Warren Griner. Going to be moving on, and it came down to the tire drop. That's super unfortunate because, again, you saw Warren Griner with the big mistake in chase, but kept all four tires on the track. And that's going to be seeing him moving on in competition. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, I'm sad, um, I'm Brett. This, this, I want a refund. This game sucks. <laughs> You're saying that after the first half of this round that we've been seeing. Uh, but for real, though, um, you know, this this round has been nuts. But it, it uh, what we've been seeing here is where the judges are putting their weight. And uh, we're seeing if you get taken to Gapplebee's, it's not going to be as bad as dropping a tire off track. Because, you know, you can lose that proximity because you went a little too steezy on the entry on one corner. And now you're, like, behind by a little bit, by, like, a car length, two car lengths. But when it comes to dropping a tire, that's a pretty big mistake in the eyes of the judges, as you mentioned. Uh, really unfortunate because Brett was having a decent run, but Warren was just throwing that car around and uh, came out on top on that one. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Team Xenon, teammate two, Brett Walford, Dylan Fink trying to play spoiler to Darwood Lipiak in the Yellow Motorsports Machine. Uh, S14 versus S15 battle here. Dylan trying to be able to make it into that top eight to take out Griner and avenge his teammate, but he's got to get past the winner of the last of uh, of the battle against Victor Lostras, which is Dawid Lipiak. Dawid in the chase position in the S14. Leading is Dylan Fink in the 180SX. What an entry from Dylan Fink right now, but right onto the door for, is David Lipiak. Is all four tires being able to stay on course? Big correction oh. in the chase position for Dawid. Can Dawid bring it back together and have a good second half of the run? One tire on the curbing and completely miss, or missing a little bit of that second outer zone going into the final zone. Dylan Fink is just on one right now. May not be Luke Fink, but trying to channel some of those vibes. But D Dawid, good chase, making up for his mistakes, but uh, definitely going to be sitting on those mistakes. Yeah, I got to say, Dylan Fink has been on one today. Uh, and, you know... Uh, getting all that outer zone, uh, getting it fairly deep where you want it, uh, right from the beginning. And, yeah, like, Dylan has just been calculated all day, uh, throwing a lot of 
nice, consistent angle. Lots of speed in that car. Lot sick angle going into turn three. And, it, you know, Dylan Fink is just like... Today, he's just one of those drivers where it's just like he's, he just sets on the angle and he's just like, I'm good. It's almost like he's like, you know, he's got this like button he presses and then the car just kind of stays at that one angle and just kind of drives itself. It seems these 180s, these S13s in general are really, really um, taking advantage of this track as we move into the second run here. Lipiak in the lead, Woo! Dylan Fink in the chase. Getting that pressure from oh, from Lipiak, almost making a little bit of contact, just a smooch, no problem, man. We're still holding hands, going to the prom. Maybe a little bit of curb there for Dylan Fink, but we'll have to take another look. As he, I cannot believe he did not make contact with Lipiak in turn number one, moving into thirty-three Ooh. here, right onto the door of that yellow motorsports machine. Great oh. lead for Lipiak, but good leads breed good chases, and good golly, Miss Molly, was that ever a good chase? Good golly, Miss Molly. I'm sorry, I said that. I apologize. It came out. It's... <laughs> you, uh, oh, what this, NBA this initiation team is it is nuts. To get close on turn one here because it's so fast and so risky is so hard. And then he doesn't hit him. He gets real wow. close. He doesn't hit him in there. That's just nuts. These guys are crazy. Yeah. Wow. Like, wow. 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 As we do have a winner, again, pretty clear of the mistakes from one of these drivers. Slide him left for David Lipiak and slide him right for Dylan Fink with the best backfire in the game. Dylan Fink, XE Baggins, bagging himself another victory here and has an opportunity to make up for his teammate, Brett Walford, and take out Warren Griner. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the battle of the 180s. Both these guys have been driving super similar today. Very stylish, very fluid. Uh, lots of angle in the transition between one and two. Again, making it look like Long Beach out there, where this track is a lot faster, a lot wider. So, ladies, this is going to be a barn burner. And on top of that, the winner makes it to the final four. Oh, man. Oh, Warren Griner up against Dylan Fink. You have, very you have evenly matched. very evenly matched. You have Dylan Fink, who uh, has been consistently improving very well throughout the season. You have Warren Griner, um, who also has been doing so. But Dylan Fink, uh, I feel at the start of things, had been on a... Like, I don't like necessarily saying it like this, but... Uh, Dylan Fink kind of starting at a bit of a higher level, you know, being able to finish uh, further in the bracket than Warren. But both drivers at this point have been running very consistently, like deadly consistent. So this is going to be just so sick. Mm. This is going to be sick. Griner going to be leading with that little Irish flag on the front of the vehicle. Dylan Fink in chase with the more angular front bumper and a slightly bigger wing. With the ESDA banner in the chase vehicle, Flick Nation versus Team Xenon. Great job from both. Warren Griner doing things again Whoa. on that first outer zone. But Dylan Fink says, buddy, if you want this win for me, you're going to have to take it right onto the door of Warren Griner not leaving. And, oh, maybe a little bit of a hiccup there. Keeping all four tires on course, staying on line. Just a slight, slight bobble in transition. But Dylan Fink wants this final four, ladies and gentlemen. And Warren Griner's going to have to take it from him. Oh, man. Huge run here. But uh, there is a very large mistake to point out here. Uh, as we head into outer zone one here, both cars doing a good job here, but we're going to take a look. Uh, coming out of outer Whoa. zone, uh, coming out of this section of the corner right here. Ooh. That was the tire. Warren. Like the back half of the tire came off, but I don't think the contact patch was on the grass. Yeah, that is very close. You can definitely knows see where the back of his car could, is, man. Holy crap! I could definitely see uh, some grass being flicked up there, but I can't tell if that's because the car was over or if the, because the car was literally so close to it that it just started like the it just started kicking up grass. 
Griner now in the chase position going to have to put down some pressure against Dylan Fink. Again, Dylan Fink in the lead vehicle. Griner in the chase with the purple. Not what Griner's looking for. Another correction coming off of turn number one. Going into the second mm. corner, the second inner zone. He's going to have to put some pressure on here. Big slowdown zone. Is he going to dive in? Yes, he does. But big angle from Dylan Fink in the lead position. But Griner is not faced right there on the door. Ladies and gentlemen, two similar mistakes. Two kind of slightly corrections in their chase positions. Who is going to be taking this one to the finals at Hampton Downs? Oh, you know, here's the thing. Run to Warren Griner is just never able to match the angle that Dylan Fink is able to throw down. Uh, you can see he's struggling to get that car to angle in the ba uh, in behind Dylan Fink, whereas Dylan Fink is just once again just uh, clicking that autopilot and just setting the angle. Uh, once again, like uh, I, I think I see two tire drops, like one tire drop in run two, one tire drop in one run one from the leads. Um, so that would then put them about even. So then considering the lacking angle from Warren Griner, considering like for a chase driver, you have to match or better the angle of the lead driver. And Warren, I don't think like after the initiation of the first corner, never really matched it. So we do have a winner, ladies and gentlemen. And slide him. I think the white 181, by the way, XDDD. But that is going to be going to the judges. That is a truck. That is absolutely a taco. Slide him left for Griner, right for Fink, and an absolute fisticuffs right there at the end. Wes going Fink, Die going Fink, CJ going Fink, Dylan Fink, XE Baggins. Making it into the final four, taking out Warren Griner. Unfortunate for Warren because Warren was probably the best car on that outer zone we've seen all day. Uh, on all the outer zones, just absolutely knows where the, his car is. Very, very heads up driving from Griner. Small mistake in comparison to what we've seen today from Griner is going to be taking him out. And Dylan Fink avenging his team Xenon teammate. We now have three finalists in our final four. We have the Ostrakas. Darius and Martinez are going to be on the left side of the bracket. Dylan Fink, group number three winner. We have one more group left to go, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into our finals here, the EA Sports Drift presented by Big Duck Club at Hampton Downs, New Zealand. And some heavy hitters here in this final group. Darren Baker, XE uh, Rousey, who we've seen win before in the GTR, um, going as Stanislav Tarasov. Uh, Alexander Element going up against Yasir Saad, who is absolutely driving out of his mind as of late. Uh, Rayan Eldina, I apologize for the pronunciation, qualifying six, going against Cameron Mustard in the in the hallway with a, with a candlestick. Would be better if I didn't stutter. Um, Zach O'Sullivan going against Robert, oh boy, Kowinski. Thank you very much, Cisco. I just saw vowels and got scared. Um, Zach Quit O'Sullivan, I believe your current points leader and also VDC Rookie of the Year. So a very, very, very stacked group number four as we, again, just have to jump out a little bit, catch our breath from that group three action. But before we go, ladies and gentlemen, the Skuko Drift family putting out a new car pack, the Inertia Irish Pro Car Pack 1.7. You can go find it on their website skukodrift.com or you can type exclamation mark inertia into the drift into the podium esports chat and get the link from one of our bots but ladies and gentlemen for all of us at podium esports we're going to take a quick breather here catch our breath process what we just watched and go into our final group before we head into final four don't go anywhere stay tuned lots of esports drift action coming up next coverage of the 2021 esports drift association is brought to you by big duck club whether you use their parts in your next drift car, time attack monster, drag machine, or street show car, Big Duck Club is prioritizing enthusiast needs with motorsports requirements. Visit BigDuckClub.com today. By Nexon Tire, one of the leading tire manufacturers in drift competition around the world. From race to street, Nexon has a tire for you. Nexon Tire, we got you. By NRG Innovations. From hubs, wheels, shift knobs, and more, NRG has the finishing touch you're looking for for your next build. NRG, keep innovating. 
by Next Level Racing. Build your ultimate racing simulation experience with Next Level Racing. Esports tested and award winning, Next Level Racing, be first. And by Vossen, your home for Assetto Corsa drifting content. Want the track from today's event and more? Visit Vossen.co. Got you. Next entire. This is our series. So many different pieces that you have to watch out for. Where the stakes are always higher. $300,000. Where virtual meets reality. How bad do you want it? They're wasting no time getting at it. Where the best thrive and the flawless win. This is the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Porsche Panamera. We got you. Next entire.
This is a story about trends. This is a story about innovation. This is a story about caring. Or even a story about all of these things. We made up our minds and are now putting it into action. Let's start with a trend that's unmatched. Let's drive innovation that isn't just brilliant, but that propels change in life. Let's not just understand, but care truly and love. Who is this for? The answer is you. All of these efforts are made to make your life invaluable. This is just what we're here for. Everything about you is meaningful, from your time and experience to your future dreams. Creating your mobility. We got you. Next entire. Ladies and gentlemen, the producer said go, and I had a mouthful of water. Very good timing. <laughs> Welcome back to round number six here at Hampton Downs. It's been an absolutely excellent round of driving so far for the 2021 Esports Drift Association presented by Big Duck Club. Welcome back to Podium Esports, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Keenan Cousin, joined by Strix, Pulsa Tricks, and Cisco Scarmuzza, group number four on deck. And Strix, we got some, got some hammers in here, got some power tools in here absolutely of course the one power hammer i am thinking of is a uh, colonel mustard and the you know the joke yeah that's that joke's been beat to death just like yeah the, the joke. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we do have uh darren baker third qualifier going up against stanislav tarasov in the 30th qualifying position uh for our first battle in group four followed by alexander element and yasir Saad, ryan aldina going up against cameron mustard zach o'sullivan and robert kwasinski pulling up the uh, final top 32 battle in group four and uh keenan i gotta be honest if groups one to three are anything to go by i i don't know no words. I'm just ready to get my... I'm just ready to let my brain leak out of my ears at this point. Like, this round has been nuts. I've been trying to do that for years. That's why I drink. <laughs> um, going into first battle here again, we just have uh, some technical issues. I'm not sure if they're going to send them for a little bit more practice or what's going on here. But uh, one of our judges is taking a pee break, and apparently he's got a lot of pee. So uh, next, first battle on deck is Stanislav Tarasov versus Darren Baker. Darren Baker in that uh, almost Darth Vader-looking GTR. Stanislav going to be the teammate to Grigory Andreev. Stanislav in that white and blue. This is, just, this is not a, a comp run. This is just, yeah, this is just practice while waiting for one of our judges to come back, letting him get some <laughs> scores, man. I love Darren. Did you ever I, have like, I mean, you ever go to like high school once, and then your friend has like a funny joke, and that's super XD funny, funny, and then just that that's his joke, and then by like four months in, I, first of all, I was that kid in high school, but my man's beating the joke swear to death. By the time we get to finals, it's going to be funny again. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Of course <laughs> I got it. You know, but to be honest though, I have a I have a soft spot for Darren Baker specifically because like the R thirty five was my comp car when I was mm -hmm. doing drift competition. And it always just looks so slick going sideways. And with the doors opening like that, <laughs> you know, it, it just, it's dope. It's dope. It's gnarly. All right, we do have a full judging booth again. Darren Baker going to be taking on Stanislav Tarasov. Darren, I'm going to see if I can get the points up for you guys. I normally have a bunch of relevant tabs open. And I forgot to open the points. So point system in ESDA is kind of unique in the sense that uh, for those who watch NASCAR, it's somewhat similar as to where the entire season gets you 16 finalists. And then 
after we get to the get those finalists the final round is worlds where it is a i believe double elimination tournament and the winner of worlds will be your esda champion for the season so darren baker in the lead stanislav tarasov in the chase and those first i think believe those first eight or so positions in the points are pretty well set in stone but a lot of the bottom spots near the 16 cutoff mark are very 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 close we'll see if we can get those points up for you before we get to the final four but before we got to get there we got to get through group number four so this is darren baker in the lead in the black gtr darth vader against stanislav tarasov from ukraine darren the irish driver in the lead position Nice entry from Darren, getting all of that outer zone. Very Warren Griner, all maybe even dropping a tire off. Saw a little puffs of dirt there, but not affecting his speed. Stanislav right there in the chase, not afraid to get close to the Titan. That is Darren Baker in the much bigger vehicle. Maybe a little bit of a tap there, maybe causing a tire off and an individual tire off for Tarasov. Going to have to take another look at that as we move into the last part of the course. Cross the line, Strix. I did see a tire off, but I also saw just... A little no tap, no tip a tap, little tap a room before. I'm sorry, I won't do that again. But <laughs> but like a little tap before that uh, that tire was off. Yeah, from my perspective here, I definitely saw like look at this. Look how close Darren gets to the back end of outer zone one. Look how close he gets on the exit. So ridiculously close. But check this out right here. You're gonna see a little bit of a nudge. A little bit of a nudge from Stanislav, and without that nudge, I am like 90% sure Darren Baker would have stayed on track. It was just the tiniest of bumps, but it was enough uh, to put more speed on that uh, on that R35 and send it just the tiniest little bit off course. Even so, Darren Baker throwing down a really great lead run, doing fantastic in the beefy boy. All right, switching positions now. Tarasov in the lead, Darren in chase. Darren's known to put down some pretty aggressive, some pretty dynamic chase runs. Let's see what happens here going up against the Ukrainian. Ooh, I was going to say maybe a bit of a late transition. They're sitting on even mistakes now. Can he get that one tire out of the dirt? He does. Great job from Tarasov to not keep that car on course. But the door is now open for Darren Baker to capitalize on that mistake. Right to the door Wait. of the lead vehicle, the Sunoco S15. Oh, both of them going off course there, grabbing a little bit of dirt Whoa. as we go across the line a lot of drivers have been going off in t1 it seems like just because you're dropping off into the dirt it would probably be really easy to have that car push wide completely off course so great job from Ter tarasov to keep it on track great job from darren to give him the room to be able to correct for that mistake and one thing i have noticed from uh comp experience in the r35 specifically is that when you're going up against other cars like the s15 like the s13 and such you're often like the biggest car on on the track. Uh, so dealing with that longer wheelbase, you have to do a lot more pushing and pulling uh, in order to get those transitions without hooking the bumper or anything. It's also very wide as well. Um, so trying to get close throughout the outer zones and then pulling apart just a little bit so that you can, uh, so that you can allow the lead driver to transition that's always very difficult but darren baker trying his best to uh make it look clean and he does a good job here so we do have a winner slide him left for darren baker slide him right for stanislav tarasov uno dos tres that is going to be darren baker darth vader moving on into your top 16 as we move on into our next battle. Quickly again, just going into the points, speaking of Darren Baker, Darren Baker, Zach O'Sullivan, Vicarisa Lucas, Darius Ostreka, and Brandon Gardner all are locked in to the playoff final as we go Alexander Element going against Yasir Saad from Team J or JX team in that S14. We've seen do some things this season. But uh, the gap right now, the cutoff score is Martinez Ostreka with 140 points. Right behind him, Connor Christensen, Augusta Ferreira, Stephen Hatcher, Jamie Healy. Um, right there with 140 points. A lot of these drivers actually not in competition today. The one I see is Artem Chilkov, who got knocked out pretty well immediately. Um, we'll see 
Uh, Cameron Mustard still able to be able to make a late game push. He's 35th in points right now, but the points are very close. Cameron is in 88 points and the cutoff score is 140. So that top 16 kind of getting set in stone here. Um, but those four names, there's five names that we went over earlier, Brandon Gardner, Darius, uh, Vicaris, Darren, and Zach are all locked in. It's a bunch of other names, Nico Stalia, Austin Zaliski, William Holloway, Brandon Patrick, all those names are trying to get locked in as we go into this next battle. Alexander Element in the lead position in the S14. Kuki in the Zenki is Saad. Great job on that outer zone from Element, but Saad right there in the chase in the Yokoi-inspired S14. Going maybe a little bit shallow, getting that outer zone, however, is Saad, but the gap is going to open up between these two drivers. One of the biggest gaps we've seen all day, actually, just putting a just showing how Whoa. good the driving has been today. Good charge from Saad there at the end. Maybe not getting all the inner clip he was looking for, but ended that run in an exclamation point, and that is something you want to carry into your second run. Yeah, you could really tell that Yasir Saad was really charging in hard, throwing a lot of speed into that uh, the final corner, but unfortunately not throwing angle to try and keep the car towards the inside and running wide on turn three, but... Uh, beyond that, you know, yeah, we can't count Yasir Saad out yet after that mistake because Yasir Saad, uh, I believe last round, finished very, very high uh, last time and did a fantastic job. So uh, we haven't seen him unleash his full potential yet. No, not even in the slightest. Yasir Saad now going to be leading and Alexander Element going to be chasing. Element, a new name to me personally. Going to see if he can stamp that name into my brain here as we go into turn number one. Chasing is Yus Alexander Element. Yasir Saad in the lead position. Again, all S14 battle. Kind of going shallow in the chase, but he's going to use that shallowness to put pressure on the lead vehicle. Yasad, all four tires still on course from Element. Getting aggressive into the second zone, but both going wide. Maybe a little bit of the tire off there from Element in the chase. Moving into the final corner. Yasir Saad doing what he's known for. Best big entry into that final corner. Maybe a little bit wide, Strix, but Element not phased. This one could be close. Yeah, it could be. Although, uh, once again, we've seen this is a second run we've seen today where consistently the chase driver is just not able to throw down nearly as much angle as the lead car driver. And this might be down uh, to setup preferences because these two cars are pretty similar uh, to each other and how they behave, their weight and whatnot. But, you know, um, really, I... I you know, I'd really like to see more angle out of Alexander Element, but you see your saw it, as you mentioned, is just, like, he's starting to get warmed up, and you can really tell. Like, he hasn't laid everything down. But if this does go to the judges and it does get close, it's possible with some of the mistakes that he made uh, could mean that he just didn't get warmed up fast enough and might be eliminated early. Yasir Saad, one of those two drivers that needs a good finish here. Yasir Saad sitting on 144 points. And again, the cutoff currently after round five is Martina Sostreka with 140 points. So if Yasir Saad can have a good day today, he can push himself a little bit deeper into this top 16 in points and be able to secure his spot into the ESDA top 16 playoff. Um, has not secured that spot yet, but... Um, you know, being on that pretty close to that bubble, if you can go pretty far in competition today, a lot of the drivers who are knocking on the door are just not here. Either they didn't qualify or they didn't uh, didn't participate in this week's event or this round's event. Because um, even down to 30, 32, I'm, I'm, other than Yoshida, who unfortunately got knocked out early, and uh, Cholkov, who once again got knocked out early. That's the only two names that are really able to pressure this top 16 in points. But um, anyone, any of these guys, again, very, very close. Um, any one of these guys who can make a late Brent Walford as well uh, down there in points, but not probably the better one of the people who are here today that can make a run for that 16. Um, you know, anything can happen in that last round when it comes to points, but to get there, we still have to uh, dissect what happened here. And this is your second battle of the fourth group here. At ESDA round number six at Hampton Downs, as we do have a winner. Actually, I, mm, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, slide them left for Element, right for Saad. 
and I lied to you right to your face, and you all believed it. One more time. Definitely didn't say we had a winner by accident. One more time, ladies and gentlemen. We are going at it again. All S14 battle. We are going at one more time. There's been a ton of OMTs today, but all of them have been pretty well deserved, pretty well earned. Actually, you know what? In terms of logistics, the judging's been great today. The driving's been good today. This has been good round all around so far. Good round all around. I mean, it could all it all go Pete Tong here at the end, but um, good job so far as we get these guys on fresh tires and line them up and go uh, to go again. Yeah, you see saw it, as I mentioned before, is still trying to get warmed up. Alexander Element probably in the same boat. Uh, they've been waiting quite a long time since the beginning of uh, this round of ESDA here at Hampton Downs. Uh, so it's entirely possible they're just a little bit cold. Just got to get their fingers warmed up and um, give her another shot. Uh, both drivers making a little, uh, a few mistakes here and there. Uh, but I've seen better from both these drivers uh, and the judges are asking for better as well. So here we go, run number one of the first OMT between these two drivers. Alexander Element once again in the S14 Kuki. You see saw it in the Zenki with the more blocky headlights, darker blue. Masashi Okoye inspired D-Max S14 J J uh, JX team. Nice job on the outer zone from both these guys. I think Yasir is waiting to push in. There seems to be people who get really aggressive really early in turn one end up making mistakes. But after you get to the second corner is really where you're able to put on pressure as a chase driver. We're seeing that right now from Yasir Saad. Not the best angle from Element trying to keep all four wheels on the course. But Yasir Saad, again, smelling blood in the water saying, my friend, you can't make those mistakes in front of me because I'm going to capitalize. Absolutely. Yasir is one of those drivers that... Um, is more than willing, more than uh, excited uh, to uh, pounce on those uh, big mistakes. You can see both drivers getting pretty deep into outer zone one, although Yasir may be popping out of it a bit too early. Heading into turn number two. Yeah, like both drivers doing a fantastic job uh, trying to fight it out for the final... Uh, uh, fight it out through this bracket into the final four. Uh, and once again, we're being demonstrated that these drivers, no matter where they qualify, nobody's getting by easy. You really got to be throwing down in order to make it uh, forward in this bracket. You see your side looking for a good round to secure his place in the top 16 to be able to make ESDA World Finals. Not the best entry from Element, but he's going to use that lack of angle to be able to really push onto the door of that lead Zenki of J the JZ uh, JX team of Yasir Saad. Keep trying to say JZX. Uh, Element, right again, very, 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 very close proximity. Not getting all of the line is Yasir Saad, but again, we see the angle he could put into this corner, but this time Element is ready for it. Alexander Element. Ladies and gentlemen, wow. I don't want to stay with the upset victory, but Yasir saw needed this win to stay comfortable into the top 16. But Alexander Element putting his name into the conversation with that chase run. Yeah, last run in his chase. Uh, before we went one more time, I noted that Alexander Element just wasn't throwing enough angle. This time around, he fixed it up. He was he throwing. You. Sorry? And I think he heard you. Yeah, I think he heard me too, because uh, uh, my complaint was just that he wasn't matching angle. This time, matched angle, got very close to the car in front. Um, part of that may have been just trying to get comfortable with Yasir's method of driving. Um, but, you know, uh, Alexander doing a good job to adapt to that second chance with the one more time. Uh, but, of course, uh, not to throw Yasir under the bus, you know, not trying to bury him or anything, but uh, Yasir also doing as good a job as he can, once again throwing huge angle in that lead into turn three. But, you know, follow for follow, lead for lead, I, I can see why the uh, judges might be going towards Alexander Element here. And we do have a winner, left for Element, right for Saad. Ladies and gentlemen, Alexander Element is going to be taking down Yasir Saad and moving on into the top 16. Speaking of points, again, that is something we're going to have to talk about today. Speaking of points, Alexander Element is 57th right now in points compared to Saad in 15th. 
So yeah, he might not be making the top 16, but another thing that happens is you, you need to finish in the top 50 to retain your pro license for ESDA. So Element with a good round here could take the pressure off himself and having to perform in round number six. Speaking of those who can really benefit from a good run here today, Rayon Aldina uh, from Team RPM. Both these drivers are listed from Team RPM. Cameron Mustard as well in the S15, all S15 battle. Cameron can really benefit with a good day right now, being 35th in points. Just move himself up a little bit more and get more comfortable being able to keep his pro license and maybe even make a shot at that top 16. Rayon is in 63rd position, even lower than uh, than Alexander Element. Once again, one of those drivers that if they have a good day, they could really not have to worry about uh, retaining their pro license for 2022. So both these guys, uh, both these drivers rather, with a lot on the line in terms of what this means for their next season but to get there, they have to get through this. Yeah, both drivers are, um, you know, very, uh, both drivers are very good drivers. Every driver who showed up today is a very good driver, but uh, both cars picking, uh, both drivers picking S15s, a reliable chassis. And, you know, Cameron Mustard has been doing very well all season. I'm excited to see what he does here at Hampton Downs. Mustard in the chase, Eldina in the lead. Good job on that. All of that outer zone from Eldina, not quite getting it, is Cameron Mustard. Good angle from the lead vehicle of Eldina. And Cameron Mustard Ooh. matching it just as we get to that first inner clip, moving into the second zone. And the RPM S13 of Cameron Mustard right onto the door of his team. And the Hyperfuel S15 is Eldina. Going through the last corner, great proximity from Cameron Mustard, but a great lead run from Brayon Eldina. Yeah, I love that last uh, half of the section there, last half of the run. Uh, pay very close attention to that last half of the run because it's going to look like a ballet dance, like they've choreographed this. Uh, heading into uh, the exit of turn one, and now pay attention here. Look at them transition, transitioning at the exact same time, following the same line. Uh, maybe Cameron not quite getting the angle there. Once again, transitioning at the exact same time, setting up at the exact same angle. It, it's incredible. It's like a dance routine. Switching. <laughs> oh, careful. That's a teammate. To move into run two, Eldina now in the chase. Mustard leading with the Scottish flag, it looks like, on the roof of that vehicle. As we move into turn one here at Hampton Downs, great job on the outer zone. A little bit shallow from, oh, they say a little bit shallow. Riding the yellow line is Eldina. Lee. Definitely want to see them go a little bit wider in T1. Moving into turn number two now. Kind of a change of line from Eldina to be able to stay with Mustard. Mustard oh. maybe going a little bit wide. Going to have to check the replay there as we go into the final corner. Mustard getting all of that outer zone. But Eldina right there, maybe a little bit too shallow. Might be the story of offline and chase. Very good in proximity, but the line wasn't super strong from Eldina from what I could see. Well, what, from what I could see in my camera uh, here on the production feed, I think... I saw in run two, uh, Cameron Mustard may have run wide, but Ryan Aldea, uh, Aldina might have run too narrow and touched that curb. Take a look at turn two right here. Very important. Yeah, Ryan Aldina just getting onto the rumble strips just a little bit, whereas Cameron Mustard running just the tiniest little bit wide. That little mistake from Ryan Aldina in the chase might be sealing the deal here. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a winner. Slide him right for Mustard, left for Eldina. Only one of these teammates can move forward, and that is going to be Cameron Mustard, the condiment of choice, moving into the top 16 as we have one more top 32 battle left to go here. Round number six from Hampton Downs from Esports Church Association presented by Big Duck Club. There's going to be Zach O'Sullivan, your current points leader. And by a decent margin with 376 to Darren Baker's 326, very much comfortable in that top five and secured into the playoff. He's just here having fun now, getting some seat time in that just slide at S15. Going up against Robert. Why is this so hard? 
Kwasinski. Why is it so hard for me to read? Kwasinski. Kwasinski in the 370Z. I got to tell you, this has been one of the most varied rounds in terms of cars for ESD. I got a little bit nervous there at the beginning of the season when it was S14s, S15s. But, um, I mean, the S chassis is still very much prevalent. But we've seen an AMG GT. We've seen a, 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 a couple BMWs, a wagon, two wagons, Mustang. There's been a little bit of everything today, and it's been a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, you love to see variety in the cars. You know, you've always got you've always got your reliable picks with the uh, S chassis. You know, your S thirteens, fourteens, and fifteens. But um, seeing the wide variety of cars that people have picked is just really refreshing. I love to see it. All right, O'Sullivan in the lead, Kwasinski in chase in the three seventy Z. Wes in chat saying who's going to whip out an Oldsmobile 88. <laughs> I'd love to. Someone do it. Get an El Camino out there. Zach O'Sullivan, FTC, our VDC Rookie of the Year, and your current points leader going against Robert Kwasinski. Woo! Needing a good finish here. Right onto the door, not phased from your points leader, Zach O'Sullivan. But O'Sullivan, again, just lock to lock. Oh. Using the curbing there a little bit. And that is a tire drop, but doing a good job of not putting it on Boy. the dirt. Kwasinski a little bit phased in the chase right now as he goes into the final corner. Good job cleaning it up in the second half of the run, but it looks like he saw Zach go a little bit wide there and got kind of spooked. I'm not sure if that's what happened, but um, from what I saw, it just looks like he got kind of nervous after Zach went a little bit wide. Yeah, as we take another look at this, Zach O'Sullivan in the lead, initiating very nicely. Robert Kwasinski following him very nicely as well. Heading into the exit of turn one, transitioning, and you can see right there, that's where the problems happen for Robert Kwasinski, just not uh, not staying on track, dropping that tire, and then from that point on, he just seems spooked. He just seems unsettled. Spooky! Yeah, I, just not, I just don't think he got the transition he was looking for, looking um, on, on the replay, but Zach O'Sullivan... Now going to be chasing in that S15. Can he switch from the 13 to a 15? Says it really helped out his driving. You're seeing it here now. Kosinski in the lead. Nice job on that outer zone. And the only 370Z in competition today. Good job with the angle. Zach giving him a little bit. Oh, oh, as I say that, one tire off of that lead vehicle. Zach giving him a little bit of room to breathe. Moving into the final corner here. Might see attack from Sullivan. And you do. Right to the door of Kosinski. Maybe grabbing a little bit of that inner clip, but no harm, no foul. I think Zach did a great job in, 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 in correcting for the mistakes. Kwasinski, great job as well, but with that tire drop and that mistake in the chase, not sure if that's enough to take out your points leader. Yeah, Zach O'Sullivan has been on, a, been on an absolute tear all season. He's a very formidable uh, driver to go up against in ESDA and this is no exception with this track being as simple as it is um you know Zach O'Sullivan is gonna be on it so you're gonna have to bring your A game and unfortunately Robert Kwasinski just not quite able to do that making a tire drop and that's gonna be a big mistake yeah and no surprise here slide him left for Sullivan O'Sullivan slide him right for Kwasinski all going towards Zach O'Sullivan and the JSI S15 moving on into the top 16 and that's going to do it for top 32 for everyone in this event but group number four now moving to top 16 action Darren Baker Alexander Element Alexander with I, I dare to say the upset victory against Yasir Saad moving on into the 16 Darren Baker one of your pros uh, confirmed for the playoffs, confirmed for the pro license. Um, Element, the better day he has now, the better chance he has of retaining his pro license. So this is a, not necessarily a must win, but would be very, very good for the Element camp if he could take the victory over um, over ba Darren Baker today. Yeah, we're getting to uh, the final parts of the season. Two battles on different sides of the point standings. Uh, you have drivers who are trying to keep their license and then other drivers trying to make it into the playoffs. And uh, it really adds a lot of tension and a lot of pressure on these drivers. But these drivers are also not unfamiliar with this kind of pressure. ESDA has been running for a very long time. A lot of these drivers running in ESDA itself for a very long time. So really... 
it's basically all it's been about today has been who's been able to keep their cool, stay focused, and react quickly to the driver ahead uh, in order to be able to throw down some sick runs. Element now chasing Baker in the lead in that all-black uh, GTR. Getting all of that outer zone. It, oh, but right there is Element. We saw him basically win his battle through Ooh. the aggressive chase. Or maybe a little bit wiggly in terms of Ooh. angle, but definitely putting pressure on in terms of proximity. Baker, very nice up in the lead position, but lead, good leads breed good chases. And Element right now is taking advantage of that long wheelbase GTR. He's putting the door on Darth Vader saying, the force is with me, my friend. I'm taking this win today. Wow. Wow, an absolute clinic by Darren Baker in the lead there in the black R35 going up against Alexander Element. And once again, just throwing a lot of angle in that R35, filling out that outer zone to completion. And, you know, Darren has just been fantastic. It's just the further he gets into the bracket, the I don't know. He just he has gets this better thing. and better as he goes. Yeah, that's yeah. just that's that's typical uh, Rousey. That's just how he drives. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's one of those drivers who notices his own mistakes and then immediately improves upon them and comes back even harder. Uh, I feel like if he wins this one, he's just gonna crush it. He's also a very reactive driver, knows when he gets a good chase put on him, he is able to bring the noise in his chase. So we're going to see it right now. Element looking good in the lead so far. Baker getting close. That car just looks massive in comparison to that Kuki S14 in the lead position. Good job from Element so far. Best lead we've seen him do today. Very cleaned up from his 32 battle. Baker actually getting gapped a little bit. One tire off for Darren Baker. Big flick from Element. Not necessarily a minor mistake from Baker, but is that enough to put into a question? Did Element just take down one of your ESDA pro finalists? Did I just commentator curse Darren Baker? I'm, I think... Darren Baker, as, I think as I might said, cry. just needed to bring it in the chase here, Strix, but watch this transition in run number two, bottom right of your screen. Just a little late. I think I'm going to cry. Him to push wide here and then one tire off. Not seeing a major mistake from Element. Maybe the line could be cleaned up a little bit. But as we've seen today, a tire off course is a huge deduction. Um, and just a quick shout out to, we got Team Triple F Drifting Department, Brandon Patrick in chat. And it's his dad's birthday today. So happy 50th birthday, Mr. Patrick. Hope you're having a good one and having some uh, some refreshing adult beverages. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. Slide him left for Darren Baker and slide him right for Alexander Element is going to be getting the win over Darren Baker. And it all came down to tire drops, ladies and gentlemen. That is Alexander Element moving on to face the winner of the next battle. But that is going to be a great points day for him. Darren Baker is already locked into the playoff. Just needed some more seat time in that car. Not a big deal for, De uh, for Darren, but a huge win for Alexander Element. Going to try to carry that momentum into the rest of the event. But he's going to have to face the winner of this battle. Cameron Mustard going up again. <laughs> That name's great. Cameron Mustard in the RPM S15 going up against the Just Slide, the JSI S15 of Zach O'Sullivan. Once again, your points leader. Zach will be chasing with Cameron leading. Okay, Zach will be leading with Cameron chasing. I was like, that looks weird, but cool. That's I, I trust the graphic wholeheartedly. Mistake. As we have both cars pulling to the line right now, that is O'Sullivan in that S15. Chasing or leading Cameron Mustard. And the winner going to be moving on to face Alexander Element, who is absolutely no pun intended in his element today. Very, very comfortable is that driver, but he's got to face the winner of this battle. Zach O'Sullivan, Cameron Mustard, winner going on to your grade eight. 
Very good job from Mustard so far. Zach kind of just robotic in the lead position. We expect that from uh, from our current points leader of Zach O'Sullivan. Going lock to lock. Right there, though, is Cameron Mustard. Not phased by Zach O'Sullivan. Maybe going a little bit wide. No, doing a good job of correcting that slight line mistake is Cameron Mustard. Right there on the door of Zach O'Sullivan. Excellent chase right there on Zach. Very consistent chase. Not super aggressive, not bumping the door, but right there in the pocket of Zach's chase entire through the whole run. Yeah, I got to say, that's probably the cleanest run we've seen so far. Uh, consistent proximity, consistent angle, a very decent, a very good line, I would say, throughout all the corners. Uh, both the lead and the chase looking fantastic. And as uh, you mentioned before, Keenan, you know, good leads spawn great chases. And this is definitely no exception. Uh, Cameron Mustard basically following Zach O'Sullivan, current points leader, uh, through the track and mirroring him pretty much perfectly. Again, no complaints. Uh Mustard, one of those drivers that could use a good points day to be able to secure his pro license for 2022. Zach O'Sullivan just out here to get some more seat time in that S15 so he can take it to the playoffs with full confidence. Two different mentalities here. Mustard in the lead. Sullivan and Chase. Ooh, Sullivan going a little bit shallow, but he's going to use that to be able to get onto the door of Cameron Mustard. Just avoiding contact there was your points leader of JSI Mystified. Getting what onto that zone. And there, Cameron Mustard looking super solid in the lead position. But Sullivan putting on a ton of pressure right now going into the final corner. Maybe a little bit of a wacky transition from Sullivan there. Is that the nail in the coffin for Sacco Sullivan? Are we going to see two upsets in a row? Or was that enough to take down Cameron Mustard and move on into the top tour? Top wow. Numbers are hard. Wow. Our points leader showing very uncharacteristic slop in that chase. Uh, Cameron uh, Mustard doing a good job filling that outer zone, but Zach O'Sullivan not able to get to the angles that he wants in order to match Cameron. And then heading into the second corner... Once again, the same story, just Zach, Sul Zach O'Sullivan just not getting the angle that he wants. It was a lot less like the, a lot less like the first run that we had here. Um, it's just, you know, the first run out of these two was like mirror driving. It, it is just like looking in a mirror, essentially, uh, trying to determine who's the real reflection and who's not. But in run two... Uh, I think Zach O'Sullivan might have revealed himself to be the fake reflection that was uncharacteristically a little bit sloppy. I, I mean, like, we say sloppy, but, like, uh, he just didn't get the initiation he was looking for, quickly corrected it, and then this the transition there just not looking super fluid from Zach. Those are two very minor mistakes, but when you go up against someone like Cameron who... You know, maybe could have had a bit more of an uh, an aggressive and exciting chase, but from what I'm seeing, maybe a tire drop sneaky somewhere, but didn't really do anything wrong. Um, in it's it's just a super tight call. You know, I, this is something I see going OMT that maybe Zach having more wow moments, but again, those two minor mistakes evening out versus Cameron just being super super solid. The judge is going to reward consistency. We're about to find out as we do have a call coming in. This would be not only an upset, but uh, again, a really good point stay for Cameron Mustard, who absolutely needed it to be able to go into round six with no pressure. Again, going to take a basically a two very strong rounds for him to be able to make it into the top 16, but being able to secure his pro license for 2022 and not have to worry about it will be a weight off his shoulders. We do have a verdict, ladies and gentlemen. Slide him left for Mustard, right for Sullivan. That is one OMT from Wes. And another OMT from Die. It's all OMTs. They're going at it again. Cameron Mustard is sending your points leader into OMT. Again, I think it was consistency versus Zach maybe driving a bit better, but also having those minor mistakes. Camera contact on turn two as well. And Zach had closer proximity is the, is the call from the judges. When a call takes that long, Strix, you have to, again almost kind of a given that it's Mike, it's probably going to go OMT, but I think they just wanted to make sure that was the right call. Yeah. And I, I can see where the call is coming from. Uh, there were a lot of things that I hadn't really picked up on uh, in that run. 
Um, the most noticeable thing to me is always if the chase driver isn't quite matching where the lead driver's angle is. But uh, Judge is making a good call here. That's why I'm not a judge. I'm just here to slapping my gums. But I'd love to see these guys go again. They're both really good. Cameron fighting it out. Zach O'Sullivan in the lead. Cameron giving chase. Cameron leaving no quarter this time. Right onto the door of Zach O'Sullivan. Putting that pressure on early. Zach much cleaner in his line. Maybe a little bit wide there was Cameron. But only by like a half a car length. Very aggressive into turn number two. And again, a little bit of a straight in there. Maybe a tire off. Actually, definitely a tire off from the lead vehicle. Zach O'Sullivan, big angle from the chase vehicle of Cameron Mustard. Cameron with maybe, maybe two minor mistakes. Look like maybe just some front end bonding. But Zach with the tire off. And we've seen it time and time and time and time again today. You cannot get away with a tire drop here at Hampton Downs. Yeah, but we will have to take a look at this replay and take a very good look at both drivers as they head into turn two. There may have been contact. I, I think I saw it right around here. Oh, there definitely Whoa. was. Yeah, 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 you can see the lead car kind of jump around a little bit. That's usually a dead giveaway of some contact. So it's possible. It's not possible. It's absolutely true. I know it's what to say. Yeah, that sucks. That's that, uh, yeah. that's just how a settle works. The contact, the collision in this game doesn't really give have any give. So if you make contact, just a little boop like that, you can see the lead car jitter. Um, that's may have been enough to knock him offline. We'll have to see what the judges think here going into run number two. O'Sullivan potentially sitting on an advantage here. Mustard's going to have to bring the noise in the lead, but O'Sullivan in the chase, not getting the angle he's looking for, but definitely sacrificing it for that proximity, trying to put pressure on the lead vehicle of Cameron Mustard. As I say pressure, diving right in into the RPM S15's door is Zach O'Sullivan showing you why he's your... Oh, and contact being made again! Woo! Cameron Mustard wide! This has blown this battle wide open! It was almost a done deal there, I think, with another more minor contact completely pushing Cameron Mustard off the point. Both of them now are sitting on basically the same mistake. I think the only difference, Strix, is maybe Zach went a bit shallow in the first corner of his chase run, and Cameron didn't. Yeah, both drivers, you know. Uh, the thing is, Zach O'Sullivan doesn't seem to be like one of those drivers who kind of turns off. You know, he showed up here. He's very, very comfortable in the points right now. Uh, he could take it easy, but, you know, throwing the door... At Cameron Mustard is Zach O'Sullivan in that S15, uh, the purple one in the back. Like both drivers doing an absolutely good job trying to, um, you know, advance into the bracket. Like, and that's the thing here as well. Zach O'Sullivan doesn't really need the points, but he's gonna grab them anyway. He's a competitor. That's what he does. That's not the emote I wanted to do. <laughs> um, yeah, I I think Fupo just has his uh he has his is it might just be for replays, but he might have his his audio turned down. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. it's just quiet. This, these cars just aren't screaming. Yeah, yeah. Um. Um. But yeah, we see this going to the judges here. Zach, you know, it, it is just him getting seat time but the more comfortable he can be in his s15 going into the playoff tricks the more dangerous he can be uh as a competitor and then cameron again fighting for his life right now uh trying to make a really late season push to make that 16 and even if not um to be not going into uh the final round uh with no pressure on getting your pro license as we have a judging call and we're gonna have a judge come in and explain it Uh, slide him left for Cameron, right for Zach. That is going to be all Zach O'Sullivan. We're going to have our head, one of our head judges here, uh, Her Harold McKinney, or also known as Initial Die, come in and explain. Because uh, definitely, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of calls for OMTs in chat. Um, definitely looked like it had the potential to go that way. 
but uh, I'm going to see if we can get some clarification. Still a great points day from camp for Cameron Mustard to be able to make it into the top eight on, or the top 16. Uh, a lot of those drivers that he's near are only two or three points away from him. So um, Cameron able to get a decent showing. Hopefully we get to see him again. He's 35th in points right now. So, you know, being able to take a, uh, to capitalize on a lot of dr drivers around him uh, that just have not shown up, move up into the 20s in points and just get a little bit more security as we have Harold McKinney coming in explaining that judging call. Uh, what did uh, what did you see there, Dai? Uh, it, it came down to a really hard call. Um, we came down to Zach, of course. So on the first run, there was slight contact from Cameron and the two hit Zach, which caused Zach to barely drop that tire. So we gave fault to Cameron to that. Second run, uh, more came down to that last turn. So we deemed fault to both drivers. Reason why is because Cameron is already going on a, a wide trajectory to miss that clip. And also Zach had also had contact. So we just deemed that fault to both drivers. And coming down to a very slight margin went to Zach because of that first run contact by Cameron. Yeah, that's... Uh... I definitely didn't see that, so I'm glad you came in and clarified because that was pretty close uh, in terms of who won. All the battles have been really close today, so thanks for coming in and uh, good luck with the rest of the day. All right, no problem. Yep. Thank you guys. Doing, uh, you guys doing an amazing job. It's always nice when Dad gives you recognition. Uh, I'll take that. I'll take that to the bank every day. <laughs> I tried my French in chat there too. I really struggled. Uh, but we're going into the finals of here of group number four. The winner will be moving on into the final four, joining the Ostrakas, Martinez and Darius, as well as Dylan Fink. Will it be Alexander Element or Zach O'Sullivan? We are about to find out. Zach will be in the lead position in that JSI S15. Again, your current points leader locked into the ESDA playoffs but alexander element we talked about it earlier one of those drivers that could really use a good points day uh to be able to just kind of uh secure himself secure his pro license for 2022 yeah alexander element against very stiff competition though so he's gonna have to ha throw absolutely everything he's got at this run Zach now in the lead. Alexander Element giving chase. Element been, oh, not the best entry from Element. A little bit of a bump to Zach, but is able to keep it on course. Good job from both drivers. Again, Zach, Alex Ellender not afraid to get aggressive in this chase position. We've seen it more than once. They right onto the door of, uh, of uh, your leader here, Zach O'Sullivan, trying to have a good day today to be able to carry it on into that playoff. But Alexander Element trying to play spoiler right now. Across the line. Good job from both, but just not the first half of the run that Element was looking for there at all. Yeah, that initiation was a bit wonky. Take a look at this here. Just, yeah, I don't even know what happened there. Just Alexander uh, tries to initiate, and the car is just like, zoop, and it kind of goes inside. Really weird thing that happened there and of course Zach O'Sullivan I think possibly going a little bit too wide and uh jumping onto that rumble strip on the outside of the entry to turn two bit of a mistake from a bit of a big mistake from both drivers Swing into the second run now Zach getting ready to have his run up as element in the lead this is an all vdc driver battle shows what i know about <laughs> instead of competition I'm like who's this guy Ele element in the lead zach one Whoa! tire off is he able oh big straight and huge mistake from oh sullivan the biggest mistake we've seen him make all day doing a great job to be able to make up for it but Boy. element is looking super comfortable in the lead position right now zach Again, both these drivers sitting on a bit of a mistake, but Zach dropping the tire off and having the big correction afterwards is not going to look good for him. Is Element pushing his way into the final four or is Zach O'Sullivan playing spoiler? Wow. Another uncharacteristic mistake from Zach O'Sullivan. Perhaps getting a little bit too complacent, but man... Alexander Element 
once again bringing it down. And Zach O'Sullivan makes two tire drops in run two. First one in the first outer zone, uh, dropping a tire in the grass. And then uh, on the inside of turn two, uh, dropping a tire by uh, getting his front wheel onto the curbs. Very uncharacteristic uh, problems from Zach O'Sullivan. Judge is asking for another tire drop there as well. Good, good eye. The judge is looking for some clarification on run number two here, asking to see, oh, and killing that inner clip as well. Again, you can get away with kind of booping it a little bit, especially as a chase car. It's not so, it's not as violently um, held against you. I think judges may be looking for some wavering from element in the lead going into T1 there as a reason for maybe Zach straighting out. It looked like to me, maybe he just overshot, but um, judges may be seeing something that we're not seeing here, which is why they're judging and we're not. Yeah, Zach with... I mean, regardless of who's at fault for T1 there, a bunch of individual mistakes, but going into one, check the angle for element. Mm, not maybe a little bit coming off of the outer zone, but it looked like Zach was already kind of going wide. Yeah. But we'll see what the judges have to say here. This is, I think, one of those that might be up for interpretation just in T1. I, it really depends... We do have a call. Slide him left for Element, right for Sullivan. Wes is going to go with Alexander Element. Harold McKinney going one more time. CJ Walker going one more time. That is going to be an OMT battle. Alexander Element versus Zach O'Sullivan. Again, this is your final preliminary battle. The winner will be moving on to the final four. The final four already has Darius Ostreka, Martinez Ostreka, and Dylan Fink. Zach O'Sullivan trying to be the only American in that final four. Alexander Element trying to push his way into that final four. Yeah, but uh, one thing I do got to say, Zach O'Sullivan probably a little bit disappointed in himself after that run. Very sloppy. Uh, it's also entirely possible that Alexander Element may be looking at this as another opportunity. Um, you know, after having that sloppy run, dropping tires twice, he's probably thinking to himself, like, man, what's going on with me? This is weird. I don't drive like this. Uh, so we might see him just unleash some crazy stuff here. Or maybe he just makes more mistakes. Who knows? Yeah, Zach now leading Element in chase. As Zach leads in that purple S15, Alexander Element chasing in the kooky S14. Good job from Zach. Maybe a bit shallow, but Element right there checking up, changing his cadence in the line, getting very close to Zach O'Sullivan. Again, Element not afraid to get close and get rowdy in the chase position. Right up on, on Zach O'Sullivan. Zach looking much better in the lead this time. Maybe a weird little waiver there. Not quite sure if that was just a little bit of lagging. And we are on European servers, and Zach is not European. But just a little bit of a wiggle, and it ended up working out. And a much better job from both. Very, very aggressive chase from Alex, but we've seen that all day today from him. Yeah, Alex has been on a tear today. Zach O'Sullivan uh, playing fairly middle ground on that outer zone, getting all of that inner clip. Taking the transition, book drivers transitioning at about the same time, which is what you want to see there. And yeah, like, yeah, I think Zach O'Sullivan just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Maybe uh, bumping that inner clip a little bit with his front fender. But uh, a lot cleaner than uh, the past few runs we've been seeing from Zach. Zach now going to be in the chase again. Zach not one to make consistent mistakes. They do appear here and there, and he's gotten a lot better at staying cleaner, which is why he's your current points leader. But 
um of course you know no one's perfect alexander element now in the lead position zach is going to have to put down a pretty aggressive chase run to be able to keep his name in contention here and you do see that a little bit of contact no, arm, no foul does alex keep all four on track yes he does just getting a little aggressive putting some paint on the door getting him all of that inner clip is zach o'sullivan though gonna have to check a look at that that is a tire drop zone going shallow on the last outer zone is zach o'sullivan throwing caution to the win and saying i'm just gonna go for proximity and hope that gets me the win wow an interesting on the fly choice from zach o'sullivan to cut the track narrow so much to try and close the gap and you can definitely see there Alexander Element on the bottom right of your screen trying to go for an aggressive flick and gets it done. But yeah, maybe Zach O'Sullivan a little bit sluggish on uh, the return trip towards the other side of the car the, uh, heading into turn two. He just gripped. Looks like he got off the handbrake there going into the last corner and the car just surged forward. I don't think yeah. that was something he was trying to do. Um, I think maybe the inner tire drop on T2 was just paying attention to proximity not really where he was going um again we've seen big 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 uh detriments in tire drops here today hampton downs this is a pretty simple track it's three corners uh at, and the clips are all in pretty obvious places not a lot of outer zones um but unfortunately or not unfortunately but um just the way the uh, the track works is very minimal mistakes that normally you could probably get away with other places like normally a tire drop here a tire drop there but you basically can't make a mistake here that's why this has been a lot of these battles have been so close although we've had a lot of omts today a lot of very very close battles um and i think that's just down to how the course is laid out very i don't want to say simple because it's still technical when you're going this fast and this close to another car but um mistakes mistakes you might be able to get away with at more technical tracks are just not happening here um as we are still waiting for a judge call i believe this is the first omt between these two guys so we could possibly go again unless my memory is that shot and they've already omt'd but um again when we get to a second omt a third third battle we do need a winner yeah it's Coming down to the wire, really. The judge is still deliberating on this, taking their time to make sure they're sending the right person to the final four. And Alexander, though, has given himself a pretty good fighting chance going up against Zach O'Sullivan. Um, you know, Zach is a very formidable opponent, very capable, very smart, reactive. Uh, and Alexander Element, I'm not exactly sure about just yet, but um, he's been throwing up his consistency quite a lot more in a good way. You know, he's been a lot more consistent. Uh, but we may be getting a call here. We do have a judge call coming in, ladies and gentlemen. Is it going to be Zach O'Sullivan or your points leader? Or are we going... Are, or is it Alexander Element with playing spoiler? Or are we going OMT? We do have a call. Ladies and gentlemen. We do have a winner. Moving into the final four. In this battle between Alexander Element and Zach O'Sullivan. Again, we already have our three other finalists here with Darius Ostraka and Martina Ostraka. And Dylan Fink. This is the final battle deciding who's going to make the final four. So we have one vote for OMT from Wes Johnston. Die or an, uh, Harold McKinney voting for Alexander Element. And CJ Walker with the decider will vote for Alexander Element in a nail biter against your points leader, Zach O'Sullivan. Moving on into the final four. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all your preliminary battles complete. What a great points day from Alexander Element. Going to absolutely be securing his ESDA Pro license for next season, or at least giving himself a strong fighting chance as your final four is now set. Alexander Element, Dylan Fink, Darius Ostraka, and Martinez Ostraka. It's going to be the battle of the Ostrakas on the left side of the bracket. It's going to be Dylan Fink against Alexander Element on the right. 
ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get these last four drivers loaded in here. Do not go anywhere. There is the final four action coming up next. Coverage of the 2021 Esports Drift Association is brought to you by Big Duck Club. Whether you use their parts in your next drift car, time attack monster, drag machine, or street show car, Big Duck Club is prioritizing enthusiast needs with motorsports requirements. Visit BigDuckClub.com today. By Nexon Tire, one of the leading tire manufacturers in drift competition around the world. From race to street, Nexon has a tire for you. Nexon Tire, we got you. By NRG Innovations. From hubs, wheels, shift knobs, and more, NRG has the finishing touch you're looking for for your next build. NRG, keep innovating. By Next Level Racing. Build your ultimate racing simulation experience with Next Level Racing. Esports tested and award winning, Next Level Racing, be first. And by Vossen, your home for Assetto Corsa drifting content. Want the track from today's event and more? Visit Vossen. Co. Got you. Next entire. This is our series. So many different pieces that you have to watch out for. Where the stakes are always higher. $300,000. Where virtual meets reality. How bad do you want it? They're wasting no time getting at it. Where the best thrive and the flawless win. This is the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series.
Porsche Panamera. We got you. Next in tire. This is a story about trends. This is a story about innovation. This is a story about caring. Or even a story about all of these things. We made up our minds and are now putting it into action. Let's start with a trend that's unmatched. Let's drive innovation that isn't just brilliant, but that propels change in life. Let's not just understand, but care truly and love. Who is this for? The answer is you. All of these efforts are made to make your life invaluable. This is just what we're here for. Everything about you is meaningful, from your time and experience to your future dreams. Creating your mobility. We got you. Next entire. Got you. Next entire.
This is our series. So many different pieces that you have to watch out for. Where the stakes are always higher. $300,000. Where virtual meets reality. How bad do you want it? They're wasting no time. Yet. Where the best thrive and the flawless win. This is the e NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Panamera. We got you. Next entire. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to ESDA, the Esports Drift Association, round number six here from Hampton Downs, presented by Big Duck, Big Duck Club. Yeah, what you want to do is mess up the sponsor's name, Big Duck Club. Um, again, thank you for all of the partners and brands that had jumped on to support the Esports Drift Association here on Podium Esports this season. Um, and we are moving into our final four. But before we get there, we have one battle preliminary battle ladies and gentlemen we have evil rabbit which you can find on youtube pretty prolific um drifting based youtuber gonna be going up against the prodigy the nine-year-old nico stalia um andrew or evil rabbit i believe is in an r34 or five or maybe i'm totally wrong last time i saw him drive was in an r35 and stalia is going to be back in that 180 sx that we've seen him drive before today should be a pretty exciting battle again nico not getting the run he was looking for uh in competition today again unfortunately getting taken out taken down in top eight by one of our finalists darius ostreka but has one more opportunity to show off on camera a little bit here going up against evil rabbit who's gonna win this we'll have a little prediction here in chat as we get both drivers onto the line but Speaking of our finalists, we have two Ostrakas. I I'm, I know they're related. There's no way they're not. But Darius Ostraka and Martinez Ostraka are going to be on your left si side of the bracket. Um, and going on the right side of the bracket, Dylan Fink going up against Alexander Element. Um, Element having a barn burner with our points, current points leader um, to get into the final here. As well as the Ostrakas doing an excellent job in getting their way in, um, going through their, their their path here. Ostraka had to take down Warika Gardner as well as Stalia to get his way in. Those last two battles being particularly close, um, and Martinez Ostraka having to take down uh, John Elgood, Vicarious of Lucas, who's just been performing out of his mind lately, and Austin Zaleski to get there in terms of dylan fink had just a reminder had to take down kirichenko in that amg gt dawid lipiak in the s14 and warren grinder and again in a super close battle to make that final four seems like every grade a battle we've had today has been super super close and then alexander element taking down yasir Saad, darren baker and zach o'sullivan just running the train on esda veterans to be able to make it into this final four but before we get there eventually we do have to do no confidence for evil rabbit in the chat right absolutely someone put 50 point there you go there you go i'm like no no comp no confidence for the for the for the youtube air um just for reference evil rabbit did qual uh did put down a qualifying score for this round with an 80 was unfortunately three points shy of making the reserves and stalia qualifying and obviously we saw him in competition today uh 
getting a score of, if I can find it with my human eyes. I'm trying. Oh, it's in all caps, too. I'm just blind. Qualified ninth with a 91. So um, there is a gap there, an 11-point gap, but um, definitely possible for either of these guys to take the win. Our bet is 50-50. Mm. And we have uh we have seen before you know uh with regards to a first and 32nd qualifier uh the gap wasn't all that obvious so it's entirely possible that we could have like a really really good uh battle between these two even despite that point gap and another thing to keep in mind as well as when it when it comes to qualifying and stuff like that uh some people t can get the jitters or maybe they're just having an off day on qualifying day uh, so, you know, anything can really happen, especially here at Hampton Downs, where we have seen an absolute slugfest of, uh, you know, of a round of competition here, uh, for ESDA. Uh, also want to really quick give a shout out to Dogman VR for the raid while we were, uh, away on break. Really appreciate it. Hope you stick around and, uh, follow Podium Esports for some more racing and, uh, as you see before you drifting esports action so um but yeah like uh this round has been fantastic in general and i got to i got to ask you keenan oh, um <laughs> i, I got to ask you real quick keenan you know um you've kind of been like here and there with regards to like you know popping in and then you kind of have to go somewhere else uh for some of these uh competitions but from what you've seen of ESDA uh, before round six, how do you feel about <laughs> ESDA competition and the level of competitiveness here in uh, Assetto Corsa? I mean, ESDA has always been close. I've been involved with ESDA, whether as a driver, commentator, um, for probably since its inception, um, even before then when it was known as, uh, as VFD. But, uh, you know, I've been in the scene for more or less 10 years now. Um, and again, like I said, well, at least four or five years, I've been involved with ESDA in some degree and other I'm trying to compete. I'm helping with the commentary, the media side. Um, it's always been close. It's always been super aggressive. It's always been um, like, like the best drivers in whatever platform. But it, coming to Assetto Corsa did the exact opposite of what I thought was going to happen. Um, I really thought it was going to be... Uh, we were going to see a lack of participation compared to Forza because Forza is <laughs> a little bit more of an open. Hello, sir. That it is. It is time for soup. Yes. Hello. Um, I really thought it was going to tank competition, and it was going to be a little bit more of just who could afford to move over to PC and have a wheel. But uh, we, we, with the changeover, yes, we've seen a lot of drivers like Zach Sullivan. We've seen Warren Gardner, uh, or Brandon Gardner, sorry, Darren Baker. Uh, who you know under their real names now, not just their gamer tags, move over and do incredible things. But we've seen a lot more um, drivers who just show up out of nowhere. Well, not out of nowhere because they're obviously known within the realm. But you know, Vicaris Lucas, the Ostrakas, um, Dylan Fink, or Dylan Fink was I'm done. That's from, from Forza. Um, but uh, Nico Stalia again, nine years old, coming in here. He's in top ten in points right now. Uh, and every round we've done, like anyone can win. Qualifying doesn't mean anything. And it was always close in Forza, but it's even closer. We still have 80 to 100 uh, of the pros qualifying for almost every round. As speaking of our pros, we are moving into our final four. We were going to do a celebrity battle, but apparently Homeboy doesn't have any of the cars downloaded. So cool. Uh, <laughs> moving forward, we're going to be going with Martinez Ostreka against Darius Ostreka. These guys are teammates and family members. And one thing to uh, note as well, last round at ESDA, they also once again fought up against each other heading through the bracket. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head who advanced over whom, but it was a very close battle, so this will be fun to watch. All Ostraka battle, Martinez in the lead in the BMW, Darrison chasing the S chassis, not leaving any room, Aww. all motor lover battles. Speaking of loving, they're loving each other's doors right now, not afraid to get up close and personal as Darius Whoa. with his brother Martinez going, diving in, the Lithuanians going through turn number two, very, very, very smart, driving so close, but keeping all four on track and putting all this Oi. flick from Martinez in the lead BMW E30, but going just a little bit wide in turn number three, Darius there to capitalize 
rubbing salt into the wound, ladies and gentlemen, there's your first battle of your final four. What did I tell you? Uh, both uh, siblings here, uh, you know, are ve are obviously very familiar with each other's driving style, uh, having a lot of practice with each other, and you can tell with how synced up they are right off the bat, getting very close to each other's door, following uh, following Martina's line very well in that S15 is Darius Estreka, and both drivers doing a fantastic job, and Martinez with the flick of gas going into turn three. That's That BMW just snapping to angle, as we've been seeing from a few other drivers today. This is going to be pretty close if... Uh, both drivers managed to keep it on track this time as well. Martinez on the bubble right now when it comes to who's going to make the playoffs with 140 points. A really, really good points thing. Capitalizing on those drivers who are not here could pay off for Martinez Ostreka. Darius already in that final five. He's already made the playoff points. He's just trying to up his seed right now. Darius in the in the chase or in the lead. Martinez in the chase. Ooh. Not as close, but one tire off maybe for Ostreka in the lead position right up onto the door, though, is Martinez Ooh. of his brother Darius. The motor lover machine's going into number to turn number two, Ooh. maybe a little tap going in, coming out of that second corner, moving into the final turn. Again, just not quite as close, but still so close. Getting there at the end of the run is Martinez Ostreka. Is Martinez playing spoiler to his brother Darius, or is Darius moving on into the finals? Oh, man, once again, another very close one to call. But uh, looking back at it, run two, Darius Ostreka in that S15, you know, uh, on turn three, getting a ridiculous amount of angle. Just a, just, just a ridiculous amount of angle. Check this out. Gets the transition, a very snappy transition, of course, and just, oh my god, pours the smoke on in those rear tires, just shredding him as he throws that car through the corner. I, I just, wow. Both of Straka's out for blood here. They're brothers, but <laughs> when it comes to competition, all bets are off. Yeah, I mean, again, both these guys fighting for two different things. They're both in the pro fi uh, the, uh, not the pro finals, but the, the playoff finals right now. But one of them is already locked in, and one of them is just trying to get comfortable. Again, we do have one more regular season round in two weeks. It's the 26th of September, uh, Sunday, September 26th, 1 p.m. Eastern time here at Podium Esports Track to be announced. But we do have a winner the winner of this battle is going to be battling for the win the loser will be going for third place slide him left for darius slide him right for martinez and that is going to be one for darius two for darius three for darius darius ostreka takes down his brother martinez there will be a lithuanian in the finals and that man will be darius ostreka going for the overall win and will face the winner of this battle Dylan Fink, Alexander Element. We have a one minute long pr uh, prediction in the chat right now. Get some uh, uh, some channel points in there because we didn't end up running the other one. But Alexander Element, awesome job today to be able to make his way into the final four, taking down your points leader. Dylan Fink driving probably the best I've ever seen him drive. Very, very aggressive, smart, and full of passion and style. This is anyone's game. All S chassis battle, 180 SX versus S14. Anyone can win this and go to the finals. Yeah, and, you know, with the way Alexander Element has been driving today, I would not be surprised if he's also able uh, to advance here uh, and do a bang-up job. But uh, one thing to keep in mind as well, uh, both Dylan Fink and Alex Element... Um, uh, in previous rounds have had uh, minor consistency issues. Uh, as they get deeper into the bracket, sometimes they just kind of uh, make some s sort of silly mistakes um, with regards to like push and pull in the proximity and whatnot, but uh, both drivers have really shown up today. From what we've seen from both these guys today, this is still anyone's game. 
Dylan Fink representing Team Xenon. Alexander Element in the chase in that baby blue S14. Winner moving on to the finals. Loser will be battling for third place. Dylan Fink in the lead position. Alexander Element in the chase. We've seen him put down some hot chases today, and this is no Ooh. exception. Right onto the door of Dylan Fink, but all of the angle from one side to the other. Dylan Fink, probably one of the most fluid drivers through that zone all day, but Alexander Element is not phased at all. Both these guys playing to their strengths right now. Very, very aggressive in chases. Alexander Element maybe locking a little bit of angle coming across the line there, Strix. Very, very close. Oh, my. Oh, boy. How do you... <laughs> wow. Like, I... I Like, okay. So, real talk. I didn't get any sleep. The first half of this round has been a lot. I, before during the break, took a mouthful of sugar. My brain is firing on all cylinders, and I still don't know what to say. I still genuinely don't know what to say. Both drivers are just driving out of their minds right now. Dylan Fink and Alexander Element looking like complete gods on the track. Yeah, this is definitely anybody's game here as we're going to try to get the second run in for you here. Taking a look, another look at this replay, but Dylan Fink, as I pointed it out in the run tricks, just the most angle and makes it look the smoothest from one and that coming off of t1 to t2 and it makes it look like he's at long beach just so much angle going one way so much angle going the other way and that's really hard to accomplish in these cars as well they're not fun to drive that high angle and then transitioning to more high angle yeah dylan fink now chasing and alex in the lead position <laughs> Yes, keeping that car on track, but Dylan Fink says, man, if you want to get close, I can get close too. One tire oh! off for Dylan Fink, though, missing that inner clip, and it cost him. It cost him right there, grabbing more of that inner curb. We've seen people, oh, Dylan boy. Fink is getting phased right now. Dylan Fink uh, chinking his arm here, going into the final corner. Alexander Element, nice and smooth up in the lead position. That one mistake breeded like three more, and that may have cost Dylan Fink a shot at the win. Yeah, that those were huge mistakes from Dylan Fink. Un super unfortunate, but I did mention, uh, I did mention at the top of the battle that both drivers did have consistency issues earlier in this series, uh, er earlier in this season, and you know today they cleaned it up a lot. But Dylan Fink, unfortunately, uh, just running out of, well, running out of gas in one way, not literally but figuratively, and. Lots of sloppy mistakes there from Dylan Fink, but Alexander Element throwing a load of angle at that final corner, likely been seeing from many drivers all day. But, you know, it's just unfortunate on uh, Dylan Fink's side of things. He'd been absolutely killing it today and just comes just, just, just short of getting into your uh first place battle but that's just my opinion we still have the judges to wait for yeah unsure of which way this is gonna go here dylan fink throwing big angle in the lead and the chase actually getting pointed out by somebody in chat might be a talking point with the judges but element with consistent angle it's not like he's straightened out Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a winner. One of these drivers moving to the final. Slide him left for Dylan Fink. Slide him right for Alexander Element. Wes Johnston says Alexander Element. And Harold McKinney says Alexander Element. CJ Walker going Alexander Element. Alex is moving on into the finals. Wow. With a, I don't even want to say upset, but Alexander Element just no pun intended, in his element today. Started off a little bit rocky, and when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit, and it's just gotten better and better and better, but do not count Dylan Fink out. That is an yeah. uncharacteristic mistake from Fink. If it wasn't for that, Dylan was on one hard. So 
you know, still have to battle for third place, and you're going to see that battle right now. Martinez Ostreka, Dylan Fink, the winner, going to be grabbing third place today. Yeah, and you really can't count Dylan Fink out. We've seen him drive all day, throwing the the most angle the most consistently all day and it just so happened to kind of fall apart of the last part here but he still has an opportunity to pick up extra points uh if he gets a win here over martinez ostreka but martinez has also been uh absolutely killing it today as well as uh last round um so you know this one once again can really go Either way, if Dylan Fink just cleans it up, calms himself down, he could pick up some points. And Martinez Ostreka, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just going to, this is going to be great. This is, I'm so excited for this. Fink versus Ostreka. Again, Martinez, the better day he has, the better it's going to be for him in the long run. Going up against Dylan Fink, coming off a big loss. Going to try to use that energy to keep it going here. Big entry for Dylan Fink. Martinez Ostreka right there. Maybe a little bit shallow for Fink, but Ostreka giving him the room to maneuver in that BMW E30. Very, again, big angle from Dylan Fink from one side of the track to the other. Nice and smooth, but Ostreka right there matching the proximity and line of that lead vehicle. Maybe sacrificing Ooh. just a hair of angle to make sure he stays on the door of Dylan Fink and try to force him into a mistake. God, I love it when... Like, almost all, if not all, of these drivers today have been just throwing the stanky leg at the last corner, and it always looks so steezy. It always looks so gnarly. I love it. It's great. This is, like, this is honestly, like, the greatest track for drifting. This is so sick. Of course, uh, heading into turn number two, you can see a, maybe a little bit of a tire drop. Uh, from Martinez hitting that rumble perhaps could be forgiven for following Dylan Fink's line perhaps but yeah wow for a first run still pretty close yeah very very tight in between these two guys XD Dylan now chasing where we saw him make his mistake against Alexander Element <laughs> Pepit in chat saying, why isn't Alexander driving a Honda Element? Strong point. We saw one in FD before. As Mysterious Ostreka, ooh, Dylan not getting the initiation he was looking for, but going to use that foot brake to be able to push that car back out wide, taking the change of line, being able to pour all the pressure onto Martinez Ostreka right now and try to force that lead driver into oy, a mistake. Oy, 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 oy. into the door of the BMW. Going to need to take a look at that again because it looked like Martinez may have been going a little bit wide. That could have been a result of the contact, however. But right into the door and the last part of the course is Dylan Fink not sure what brought on that contact but Dylan doing his best to make sure he ended the run with an exclamation point yeah uh, heading into turn number two I think uh, it, it was a weird transition uh, for Dylan Fink it was it, he it was kind of like his car really wanted to transition uh, heading into the third corner or the second corner no, the third corner. I, I had it right. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> Never mind. I'm just dumb. But uh, heading into the heading into the second corner, uh, Dylan Fink. It seemed like his car really wanted to transition, but he just had to wait for Martinez to transition first because you you typically want to transition with the lead driver, get to angle with the lead driver, and it just seemed like Dylan Fink was waiting while Martinez might have been uh, hesitating. And you can see it right there. And it just, that's where that contact happens. It's just a very, very awkward transition. And, you know, those kind of things can absolutely happen. And I'm surprised we hadn't seen it happen more often here at uh, Hampton Downs. But, uh, wow, what a battle. So we do have a winner. But to annoy everybody here, we are not going to announce it until na, 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 we na, na, na. our podium ceremony. But we do have a winner out of these two drivers. We know it. You don't. Ha. So we'll be moving on into our final battle, which, again, is Darius Ostreka 
an excellent job. Definitely not an easy road for Ostreka into the finals. And on the other side of that coin, Alexander Element, who also had to scratch and claw his way into the finals in that uh, private, Privateer S14 going against the Moto Lover S15. is an all-S chassis battle. Both these guys have been driving excellent today. Very, very aware. Very, very smart heads-up driving. And one of these guys is going to be taking home the win and a little bit of extra spending cash. And one of them will be taking home the second place trophy. There's no trophies. I lied to you. Yeah, but uh, Alexander Element definitely uh, going to be the underdog in this fight. Ostreka, one of the Ostrekas at least, had found themselves in the final four. Alexander Element looking to take a huge uh, jump in the points. Element in the lead position in that S14. Ostreka shadowing him in that black and red and white S15, the motor lover vehicle getting all of the door of Element, but this is where he's going to be able to push really hard, and you see him right there. Maybe a little bit of curbing for Element. That is a no-go zone here. Going into the last corner. Ooh, not quite getting the transition he was looking for. Almost mutual mistakes from both these drivers. Ostrinka not getting the transition. Not necessarily a tire off, but Element may be dropping a lead tire onto that curbing in turn number two. Uh, question. How in... The absolute hell. Did Alexander Element go that far left on the track on turn two? Watch this. Watch Alexander Element here. He's going to come outside. He's going to wait, 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 transition, and he stays off the curbing. How do you do that? Wait. He doesn't touch the curb. <clears throat> no, I don't know. I definitely didn't, like, roll a tire on it. He doesn't touch the curb. That's That's insane. He doesn't like he he doesn't like I I don't know unless I'm again. literally I'm... blind but that's about as close as you can get to that transitioning about as late as you can transition into that that was so sick ridiculous oops <laughs> as we move into the finals here second run of the finals run number 2 ready to go As here we go, Darius in the lead, Alexander Enemit, again, the winner of this battle, will be winning the overall event today. A little bit shallow from Element, a little Wait. bit okay. We're going to have to see him pull back just a little bit, and he does. Darius looking very smooth in the lead position, not phased by this pressure from Element, Ooh. but this is nothing new to Ostreka. Moving into the second corner, I get, oh, oh. it right there. Just a little tap. They're going to be able to keep going, but this is going to be a talking point for the judges. Moving into turn number three, right onto the door of that lead vehicle. Pushing through the rest of the corner, Element with nothing to lose, everything to gain. Ladies and gentlemen, do we have a winner? Oh, my word. I would not be surprised if this goes to OMT because, oh, my God. Oh, my. Wow, the distance that Alexander had closed up. I don't think it could get any closer in turn three without causing any contact. Uh, and we've, we've been seeing all day as well, Alexander Element just not able to get that car out to the same angle that everybody else has. And there's that contact as well. That's going to be really important uh to the judges and i think it's ultimately going to come down to that we do indeed have a winner one of the quickest calls we've seen all day which is you know something to say a lot of close driving here today um here at hampton downs again ladies and gentlemen thank you all for joining us for the sixth round of the Esports Drift Association presented by Big Duck Club here at Podium Esports. We will be back again with round number seven. Sunday, September 26th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Track to be announced. Again, check out Vossen.co to get any of the content, any of the track content that you've seen this year from ESDA. I thank you guys very much for the support and hosting these tracks so those watching at home can give it a go. As chat has made up their mind, did a poll instead of a uh, instead of a channel point, so we can have an OMT option. Rip. No, I did that on purpose. Ah. You know, we've seen some some wacky cars today. We've seen an AMG GT. We've seen two wagons, an Audi wagon, E three forty six wagon as well. 
A lot of S chassis, 370 GTR. The field definitely spreading out in terms of vehicle choices. But the final is all Nissan, all S chassis. The 14 versus the 15 element. Working so hard to be able to make this final. Going up against Ostreka, who again is just already locked himself into the final four or final 16 for our playoff round. Which I believe is on Halloween, October 31st. Again, 1 p.m. Eastern time here on Podium Esports. Make sure, do not miss it. Get Spooky! If you are new here to Podium Esports, this is the home of professional drifting. Drop us a follow We're all over in different platforms. But ladies and gentlemen, we have some trophies to hand out here. Not actual trophies. But we have some hardware to hand out here as our winner or third place battle. Slide them left for Martinez Ostreka, a right for Dylan Fink. Winner of this battle gets third place. One for Martinez. And two and three, Martinez Ostreka from Moto Lover, the Lithuanian driver taking third place. And the last step on the podium, taking out Team Xenon's Dylan Fink, who had an excellent run today, but unfortunately was not enough to step on the podium. But excellent job from both. But the Ostreka taking the win. Speaking of Ostrekas, coming into our finals. Winner of this battle wins the event outright. Will it be Alexander Element or Darius Ostreka? Again, slide him left for Darius. Slide him right for Element. Wes Johnston says, Darius Ostreka. Die or Harold McKinney says, Darius Ostreka will be getting the win in the Motor Lover S15 in the finals. It is all Ostreka. Darius grabbing the first. And Martinez grabbing third with Alexander Element in the Ostreka sandwich. Taking second place. Excellent job from everybody who qualified today. There was no mingers in the bunch. Everybody from first to 32nd all drove their heart out. And Hampton Downs, I think, was the real star of today's event. A hundred percent agree with you. This was easily the most exciting round of ESDA so far in the season. And I think it comes down to... Uh, the deceptively simple layout of Hampton Downs. It allows the drivers to really hone in on the driver they're chasing or hone in on their lines, their angles and whatnot, really try to impress with the judges with their style. And we saw that in spades today with all these drivers doing a fantastic job battling against each other. It was just nuts yeah i mean uh, we've been watching um this has been the first season of esda over here on a set of course as a platform and the driving has always been strong i think it was a combination of everyone here getting comfortable everyone finding their groove everyone getting in their element no pun intended and just finally getting some setup changes right and then this track just playing uh an, an excellent backdrop to all of the skill and all of the talent you've seen in the field today again from top to bottom first qualifier to 30 30 second qualifier everybody came out to swing not a minger in the bunch and every battle we were talking about it earlier we were so winded after the first two groups that we just had to make it through just so much exciting driving happened so early and again thank you guys yeah. so very much for joining us the viewership has been very high all day uh, we're trying to get a hold of one of your finalists for you. Two of them are from Lithuania. So I'm not sure how good the English is or how much they want to talk. Um, would love to talk to Alex if that's possible as well. But uh, I'm seeing everyone kind of bounce out. So that might... Ooh. We don't have a driver, but we do have one of your judges here, ladies and gentlemen. Harold wow. McKinney. I wasn't for the, I don't know if y'all wanted me in for an expression. Uh, expression uh, sure, why not? I can't even talk right now. Um, it's been the, a day, man. It's been yeah. a long day. Explain the call. Um, long, good day. Yeah, so, I mean, what came down to the final battle, um, yeah, it came down to that run with Element. Um, and actually, just contacted him on the second turn, and that kind of just gave it the deciding factor right there. Like, honestly, everybody today drove really well. 
um from top to bottom um so it, it was a pretty close um gap with scoring so it is so everybody so there was there was no ducks in the group today so everybody drove well and we have one of our other judges in here wes johnson wes i mean you've only been a part of esda for only a little bit um takeaways i know me and you were talking back and forth all day but takeaways from this event for you as a staff member as a judge um whether the driving the track anything anything any sort of uh what's going on in your head right now what's what give me i can't stop talking very very excited <laughs> very excited lots of sugar sugar um this has to be like the best round that i've seen so far everyone even in the top 32 yeah i mean they're just door to door every single time i mean like i think the the best battle we saw all day was in like the top 16 there's just you know, people were complaining it's an easy track. Well, when you have an easy track, it makes for really entertaining battles. And entertainment's half of this, right? So I'm really pleased with the with the product that we were able to show everyone today. So just killer driving from everybody. Yeah, I mean, we still have two, ba our two rounds left to go. Um, not sure if we have the venue picked out yet for seven if that's public knowledge yet uh, yes or no um, don't have to answer it just a yes or no question well I, I mean i could put a little teaser out there for everybody so uh, since everybody know we are doing a world tour um there's only one there's only one region left to go uh you can really guess that so we would have a track out this week um hopefully we have a video out later this week but the track will hopefully be out this week for the drivers because the next round is literally uh <laughs> Yep, a couple weeks from now. So then after that, it's for the playoffs. It's just for um, you have your regular season champion, and also you're going to have the word like your overall champions for this for all the marbles. And, and the points race right now is looking close for the playoffs and also looking close for um, for people to try to keep a pro license for going into 2022. Um, yeah, that's where a lot of the narrative was today was who's who, you know, this is going to be really good for Martinez being able to, to, he was on the bubble there for that 16 to make the playoffs, but I got to imagine with this finish today in, in third um, with Patrick Holloway, uh, Abramov, uh, Tesemski not showing up, that's got to move him up the order quite a bit, but that is going to be it. Ladies and gentlemen, for us here at podium esports and esports drift association presented by big duck club, as Harold McKinney said, our next round is going to be September 26, 1 PM Easter time with our playoff round going to be October 31st, Halloween night in 1 PM Easter time, same channel, same place, podium esports. This is your home of competitive sim drifting. So make sure to drop a follow. We are going to go to our second home podium two for some I racing road racing action. Do not go anywhere. Stay tuned. Follow Jump with a Raid. But thank you so, so much for joining us here at ESTA. And we'll see you guys in two weeks, September 26th, here at Podium Esports. Thank you for joining us.